Pediatrics the easy. Eating up your body is the most important part of the SPA diet. SPA is what decides your mark. Like you get your SPA right, that's it. It's so a fourth program, and this gives a lot of shortcuts to get the SPA right, which is amazing. Trust that that SPA checks about five times. So the only thing that helped me get through uh, the uh, ERP and theory exams, I mean, it's, it's one of the main things. Uh, the SBA program is actually summarized, concise, and it's something that you have to read before the exam. And that's, that's basically enough. The game is here, and you are going to get a little bit of 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 a
So you need to know what is really necessary, right? So for your exam point of view, don't learn a single point which is unnecessary for your exams, right? So here the important thing is in your, uh, like there are two important things are there. So one thing is you need to become a doctor. So you need to have, you need to become a confident doctor. At the same time, you need to pass the exams. So you need to balance everything. You need to know what is exactly important for your, in your working as a house officer for the practical point of view. At the same time, this single this questions are, every, all these SBA questions are about practical points. So if you know what is necessary to learn uh, 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 as a house officer, then you can score uh, very high marks in single best response questions, right? And there are a few important facts are there which, are, which is important in your MCQ paper as well. So learn those things as well. But don't just study very minor points because you have seven subjects. Even pediatric is a huge, like it's a, uh, it's very big, right? So you need to learn a lot. There are so many topics. This is only one topic in uh, our CNS module. So there are a lot to learn. So you can't like, you can't keep everything in your mind, right? So make sure like learn the things in a very rational way. So you don't forget things and you, it will be very easy to recall. At the same time, learn what is only necessary. So then of course, like, uh, and somehow like uh, score very high marks in single best response questions, then you will pass the exams as well as you can become a very good doctor, right? So here the important thing is CNS infections. So this can ask in your both pediatrics as well as in your medicine. But here the important message is, so you can get, you can see questions in both pedia paper as well as medicine paper. But what is more important, pediatrics or many, uh, medicine? related to CNS infection. Guys, please know, please keep this in your mind. CNS infection is more important in pediatrics, 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 right? So if you know, if you learn the, this, if you listen to this lecture, you, you will be learn everything that is necessary and you will be able to score very high, you will be able to score uh, very high, like you can mark correct answers in your medicine paper as well. So why the pediatric? So eighty percent of the meningitis cases are pediatrics, pediatrics, pediatrics. Right? See, young meningitis patients like your Asu Akma, please. Got it? Right? So we are discussing in detail, and it is very important, right? And we frequently ask in your question. So in your exam paper, you will get uh, five or six questions from CNS. Okay. So out of that, definitely you will get, there are so many topics are there under CNS, but meningitis is the first or second most important topic under CNS. So the epilepsy and the meningitis are the most two important topics for your MCQ and SBA point of view, right? So you will get either two or three questions from CNS infection. So that's why, like if you learn the, the, these things facts correctly, you will be able to get the, the marks, right? Uh, or you can answer correctly in your exams. Got it? Good. So in this uh, lecture, guys, I think I have sent you all these materials and everything. Uh, so uh, actually, I'm not clicking uh, my screen. So today we are going to discuss about, uh, basically, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the types of CNS infections. Right, you need to have an idea about what are types of many CNS infections. And also we are going to discuss about in detail regarding meningitis, where initially we are going to discuss about causative organisms. Again, that is important in your MCQs, right? MCQ point of view, it is important. You need to know what are the common or causative organisms depending on the age as well as depending on the clinical condition. At the same time, you need to have a rough idea regarding risk factors. Again, we don't ask that, but you need to have a rough idea. Then the signs and symptoms are extremely important because you need to differentiate whether it is meningitis or encephalitis when it comes to your SBA paper. So you need to have a very clear cut idea regarding signs and symptoms, how, how because there is an overlap. So you need to differentiate whether it is meningitis or encephalitis because your answers depends on that, right? So you need to have a very clear idea about signs and symptoms, please highlight. 
So causative organisms important in your MCQ, sign of Christian responses. Then the investigation management, again, extremely important in your both MCQs as well as in your single best response. So you need to know the sequence as well as how are you going to correctly manage. So then, of course, you will be able to score high marks. So we are going to discuss regard, related to these investigations and management in detail. We are going to discuss about lumbar puncture because sometimes they might ask MCQs related to this. So samples, the contraindications, and the interpretation, right? So we, you need to have an idea. And also the meningitis treatment and complications, we are going to discuss in detail. So again, the, finally, the complications, and we are going to discuss a little bit about Neisseria meningitis. And also, then we are going to discuss about encephalitis and few words about TB meningitis, as which will ask in your single best response question. So TB meningitis mainly ask in your SBA question. Got it? Good. So here are the important messages, guys. What? So I have given you this uh, soft copy and everything. Hope you all have that soft copy. So guys, so what are the types of CNS infections? So there are like so many types of CNS infections are there. But in your undergraduate level, you need to know about the most common type of types of CNS infection. That is meningitis, 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 which is the most common as well as encephalitis. So that is the second most common. So that's why, like as a house officer, if you don't know this, it's a problem. But if you know those two, then like you will be able to manage so many things. But really, not so uncommon. You will see TB meningitis, which you need to have a rough idea. As well as, guys, you need to have an idea regarding partially treated bacterial meningitis. Why? Because your real patients, right? So when they have fever, sometimes they go to a general practitioner, right? So they take some medication. Now, not like in other countries. In Sri Lanka, they free, these GPs frequently give antibiotics. So this, this complete picture can get masked. So you need to have a high degree of suspicious as well as the lumbar puncture report can be very, get, can get altered. So the partial treated bacterial meningitis is, is very important. So the TB meningitis as well as partial treated bacterial meningitis frequently asking your single best response questions as well, right? Because, right, so that is very important. But uh, brain abscesses, cerebral malaria, etc. So again, um, for your undergraduate level, we don't ask that much. Just have a rough idea that would be enough. Got it? Good. So I want you all to concentrate about meningitis, encephalitis, as well as a little bit idea about TB meningitis, as well as partially treated bacterial meningitis. Got it? Good. So guys, when it comes to your exam, like, uh, so the when it, uh, like, we'll discuss first of all about meningitis, back, uh, back meningitis, right? So here the important thing is when it comes to the meningitis, so, so meningitis. So, um, Guys, here are the important messages. Um, so pediatric easy course, I think most of you all have joined. So I think almost everyone have at least joined at least for one course. So those who are sitting for this, this time exams, I know definitely they have joined at least for this pediatric course program, right? So because without that, uh, it's very difficult to pass even if you have learned, right? Whatever the country or whatever they are, or whatever they read, books you read, right? So that is the practically what we have seen, right? So it's uh, hope you all have how uh, they join for SB, at least SBTX program. So here the important message is like uh, in pediatric easy pediatric easy program is uh, sometimes looks very scary, right? Uh, right. So some students are really scared for me, but again you don't need to be very scared, like. I'm very friendly. You, if you ask from your seniors, they the majority will tell that uh, I'm maybe the coolest and as well as most friendly, right? So you don't need to get scared for me. So you can talk with me, you can communicate with me, right? So you can ask questions, every, right? Do, you don't need to worry. At the same time, during these like during these lectures, sometimes I expect your active participation as well. So uh, it's like a friendly discussion sometimes. So uh, when I ask a question, uh, just if possible, right, type through the Zoom chat quickly, right? That is the best option. Sometimes, right, uh, to decide uh, how uh, much I need to teach all, I might ask you one or two questions, right? So just feel free to talk, right? 
So you don't need to get scared, right? Uh, so I'm very cool. So even if you make mistakes, it doesn't matter. Still, you are learning, right? So Divya Jana and Hanila, my partner, right? Maradin, the Tamay, Prashna, can you be Maradin? Right? To get no one to pass it, I'm a Maradin, bad. Okay, got it? So still, you can make hundreds of enough mistakes. Okay, right. So, guys, so related to meningitis, okay. Now tell me, classic the color boy, so tell me. When it comes to the meningitis, I'm just asking. So, uh, what is the commonest or, uh, organism? So, whether it is like, uh, what is the commonest uh, type of organism? Whether it is viral, bacterial, bacteria, TB, bacteria. bacteria. Okay, great. So, uh, uh, any other different answers? Anyone? No different answers. Anjana? Uh, viral meningitis. Okay, right. So now you, like, you, you all are, like, you're confused. No, one person is telling bacterial, one is telling viral, but uh, Anjana Pisuda, right? Bacterial is, uh, right? Like, you, uh, your subconscious mind is working like that. No. So here the important message is, guys, what? When you like the thing is it like when we are talking about meningitis, it's like we are talking always almost always about bacterial meningitis, bacterial meningitis, bacterial meningitis. But hey, give me a second, guys. All right, okay. So bacterial meningitis. But the important message is, guys, but the, the out of meningitis, the viral, 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 viral meningitis is the commonest, 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 right? Viral meningitis, two thirds of the meningitis are viral, 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 right? Okay, so that is important in your MCQs. But most of these viral meningitis, so the meningitis is what? What is meningitis, guys? So the meningitis is, so basically you must have, uh, so you should have a rough idea about what is meningitis and what is encephalitis. So you know this is the brain, right? So the brain is covered from, Right, three meningeal layers. So these are the meninges, right? So if there's an inflammation, inf inflammation of the meninges, what we what do we call meningitis? Meninges inflamed belana, meningitis kill again. So if there's an inflammation of the parenchyma, brain parenchyma, we call it as encephalitis. So brain make a brain matter inflamed belana, we call it as encephalitis. So inflammation of the meninges, meningitis, one thing is guys, right? So I, as I mentioned, the meningitis is commonly caused by virus, but the inflammation will be more prominent with bacteria, right? So even the even the viral etiology is so common, so the inflammation will not be so significant. Because due to that, they, they will not be so symptomatic. So sometimes they might have fever and rough headache. Sometimes like it might settle spontaneously without any treatment. And majority we must, must haven't done any lumbar puncture even, right? For they get a hospital, they might go to a GP and do a blood investigation. Uh, looks like a viral fever. Uh, take some paracetamol and everything, then they will get subsided. So most of the, in the world setup, of course, you will see most of the time they, when they have classic features, that will be most, almost always the bacterial, bacterial, bacterial. But the, for your MCQ point of view, it is virus is the commonest, commonest, commonest. But when we are discussing in detail, we are talking about bacterial, 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 since the major, like the, in the world setup, you will see bacterial meningitis commonly, as well as they will be symptomatic and they can develop a lot of complications. Uh, more, the morbidity is high, as well as the mortality is high. So you need to learn in detail regarding bacterial meningitis, meningitis, meningitis. Clear? Good. So when it comes to these meningitis, so I told you, so this is an inflammation of the meningitis. So inflammation of the meningitis, meningitis. So meningitis can be infective or non-infective. Just you know, there is a non-infective etiology also there, right? But again, you we don't ask in your de in detail, but just have a rough idea. So sometimes some chemicals, medications can lead to inflammation of the meninges, as well as more importantly, 
some malignancies, especially these hematological malignancies like ALL, AML commonly, right, can develop meningitis, meningitis, meningitis. Again, that is non-infective. So even if you do cultures, PCRs and everything, so those things will be negative, negative, negative. But we don't ask in detail. We mainly ask about infective causes, which is more common and frequent. So the infective causes can be can divide into pyogenic as well as the aseptic, aseptic, aseptic meningitis. So what is pyogenic, guys? So how are you going to confirm uh, meningitis? Is it a clinical diagnosis or not? What do you think? Yes. Any idea? The Iranga, Iranga Chami. What do you think? How do you diagnose? How do you confirm the diagnosis of uh, meningitis? Meningitis. Kela lady. Taha do karan mo po mat. Iranga Chami. Any idea? Just have it. Just yeah. Doesn't matter. Iranga. Yeah. Some some kind of headache. Headache, some kind of headaches, sir. Yeah, they will and have those. How do you confirm the diagnosis? Me, come my lady, killer. Why are you going to How are you going to confirm it? Sometimes can ask in your MCQs. Now, asthma, how are you going to confirm the diagnosis? It's a clinical. So, none of the investigations uh, will not. Uh, like uh, advanced, so the, it's a clinical diagnosis. Bronchiolitis is a clinical diagnosis. Now, this is asthma, asthma, not asthma, so meningitis. Anyone, yes. yeah, very yes. good. Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, they can have headache, they can have those things, but how are you going to confirm? Lady Tahon Karanikon, you are doing with the lumbar puncture, lumbar puncture, lumbar puncture. So, the lumbar puncture confirms the diagnosis, right? CSF report analysis, lumbar puncture. And CSF report analysis confirms the diagnosis. So when you analyze the CSF, some uh, reports show some pus cells, right? They can neutrophils or polymorphs will be there, right? So pus cells will be there. So pus cells you will see in what condition. So they will be pus cells go back in the time and there's a significant inflammation is going on. So the of those we call it as pyogenic, pyogenic, pyogenic is mainly about the bacterial bacteria. Bacterial. bacterial meningitis comes up under pyogenic meningitis. The most important one is the bacterial meningitis, bacterial meningitis, bacterial meningitis. So at the same time, again, another important because it will cause a lot of inflammation. The other important one is TB, TB, TB meningitis. Again, the lymphocytic count will be more prominent, but the significant, there will be a significant number of pus cells as well as the protein level levels will be high. So again, the TB also, we can categorize under pyogenic meningitis. So those are the two important Type of pyogenic meningitis. But the other important thing is, guys, what well, sometimes when you do the lumbar puncture, you might not see any pus cells. The polymorphs will not be there. Sometimes nothing. Sometimes uh, they can be, but there is evidence of infection, so the lymphocytes can be there. All right. So sometimes cultures can get positive or PCR can get positive for some other organisms, but the pus cells will not be there. So what are the possibilities? As I mentioned, the fungal and spirochetes are possible, but those things are extremely rare. We don't ask in your patient. So what are the other two possibilities? So the one important thing is that one viral, 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 where you will not, you will find the lymphocytes, 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 not pus cells. That is important. The, what is the other important thing? I take a lymphocytes in the Sometimes it might look like a completely viral picture. What is the other possibility? Excellent, Imasha. Very good. That is what? Partially treated bacterial meningitis. Bacterial. Partially treated, partially treated, partially treated bacterial meningitis. So when you treat with antibiotics, sometimes these come, the, the CSF report completely can get altered and it might look like viral or it might look, it might look as completely normal. Right? So be careful. So that's why as a doctor, you need to have a high degree of suspicion as well as you need to have very clear knowledge. So that is one of the commonest picture which we find in our day-to-day -day life, right? So you need to have a very clear idea about partially treated bacterial meningitis. So are you clear up to now? Good. So we divided into infective and non-infective causes. Under infective, it's pyogenic and aseptic depending on the presence of fossils. And pyogenic, it is mainly bacterial and TB. 
and aseptic it is mainly about viral and partially treated bacterial meningitis. Are you clear up to now? Great, good. So we are moving for the bacterial meningitis causative organisms. So again, the important message is guys, what bacterial meningitis causative organisms. Okay, so it, we might, we can, we will ask in your MCQ, right? So true, false. So before discussing about neonates, we will discuss about mainly about this in general. So in general, tell me, what is the commonest causative organism which causes meningitis? So I will ask from someone. So tell me, uh, uh, Diana, Diana Gunratna, what do you think? This is Neisseria meningitis. Neisseria meningitis, very good, okay. Uh, any other different answers? Isuri, what do you think? Yeah. I tell you, it doesn't matter. I'm getting a lot of answers as well in the chat box. I'm just asking. Yes, is it any idea? Doesn't matter. Feel free to tell. You can tell anything. Right. Yeah. Yes, tell. Please, 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 please. Yes. What is it? E. coli. E. coli. Okay. Right. Tarushi Pramodya, Pramodya. Okay, good, great. So now you can see there are three different, uh, different answers are there. So one you know, is telling the streptococcus pneumonia, one is telling uh, Nicera meningitis, and one is telling E. coli, right? If I ask from everyone, so you must, others might say some other organism, right? So, but uh, only one will be true. So here the important message is guys, right? So for an MCQ point of view, it is very important. So this is, I have highlighted this topic is about meningitis and meningococcal. So mm -hmm. your, the commonest organism is Neisseria meningitis or meningococcal nemate. Right? So guys, so here important message is guys, but it is the commonest in worldwide. Sometimes like in Mecca, Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, or your favorite country, Uganda. So right, sometimes uh, like it is very common there, right? That uh, in Sri Lankan setup, it is extremely rare. You don't find, it is extremely rare. So these days, there were several cases. That's why we all have got panic. This is extremely rare, right? So here, the important message is guys, right? so the streptococcus pneumonia, streptococcus pneumonia, streptococcus pneumonia is the commonest causative organism in Sri Lanka. So in for ERPM exams, what is it? So the streptococcus pneumonia, pneumonia, pneumonia. Got it? Good. So here the important message is guys, right? streptococcus pneumonia. So. What are the problems, Pam uh, Tarushi? What do you think? Uh, what are the problems? Uh, what are the uh, infective diseases which can cause following uh, streptococcus pneumonia? Streptococcus pneumonia in organism making a thicker and in Yes. Otitis media. Very good. Otitis media. And also pneumonia. Yeah, so the pneumonia. So there are so many other problems out there. Pneumonia, right? Pneumonia and uh, pneumonia, as well as these otitis media, as well as this meningitis, right? So here the important message is, guys, well, those things are very frequent, very frequent, very frequent in hospital setup, right? So right? So here the important message is guys, but streptococcus pneumonia is very important because like it can cause otitis media, the pneumonia as well as meningitis. Sometimes the importance is, sometimes the primary site can be otitis media. Sometimes it can be pneumonia, right? So that is very important. At the same time guys, so that's why so you can take preventive measures as well. So the good part is what? So in Sri Lanka, the private sector, there's a pneumococcal vaccine is available, right? So if you give that, you can prevent otitis media, pneumonia, as well as 
uh, the meningitis significant number of cases because it will cover 23 strains, right? So you can almost cover, right, almost all these streptococcus pneumonia common types. So that is important, but it is not, unfortunately, it is not available in EPI schedule, right? So comment people never understand, right? So they are giving vaccines for each and like but not uh, promoting this pneumococcal vaccine, right? But uh, all these doctor parents are giving pneumococcal vaccines to their children, right? So you can prevent otitis media pneumonia as well as meningitis, right? But I'm a hospital like I'm a doctor in a bacterial condition, right? Got it? Good. So here the important thing is streptococcus pneumonia, strep so if I am CT point, streptococcus pneumonia. So then of course, guys, but there are two other important organisms are there. What are those two important organisms? Yes, as uh, Diana mentioned, so that is Neisseria meningitis, Neisseria meningitis, as well as Haemophilus influenza, Haemophilus influenza. Why those things are very important? Guys, please keep this in your mind. Those things are now rare. Why? Because now with the vaccines, Hib is uncommon, as well as uh, these Neisseria meningitis is also not so common in our region. But it is very important because Haemophilus influenza causes highest morbidity, 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 or the local complications. Keep that in your mind. Hib do not, it will cause significant local complications. So one of the most important thing is guys, are cochlear inflammation and cochlear inflammation. After that, they will have hearing impairment. May infection you can't cure sometimes, right? I have seen. So it can cause even following streptococcus pneumonia, right? But it is incidence is very high following hemophilus, hemophilus in place, right? So then they will they can get completely deaf, right? So that is extremely important. The other important thing is guys, what meningococcal, 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 meningococcal infection, what is the dangerous? It has the highest mortality, 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 where it suddenly can quickly spread the um, in the body and it can cause septicemia, septic shock, DIC, and they can die in hours. So you must recently, you must have heard in the news that uh, in Gaul, Bandanagar, and the VN Haruna Hospital, right? So they have gone to the hospital. Right after that, also there were several cases and several deaths, so couldn't prevent. Right, so that's very sad. So because like you need to know, you need to have very good knowledge. You need to know what you exactly need. Right, but how are you going to manage and everything? You need to know what is the exact correct best antibiotic and everything. So by that, like you can prevent deaths. Right, so have a very clear idea. Unfortunately, we couldn't. Right, they have admitted to the Karapiti Hospital and significant number of females died, right? Good. Okay, so hope you had a very clear idea. Cryptococcus pneumonia, Neisseria meningitis, and hemophilus influenza. So when it comes to the neonates, right, I'm not going in, I'm not discussing in detail because neonatal meningitis is a complete separate lecture, right? So you will learn under neonatal logic. So under neonates, what is the commonest causative organism? So guys, you all know. So neonates were common with infections and usually early neonatal infancy, early neonatal life. So most of the time, guys, it's from mother, right? So what happens is, so mother's GI tract, what is the commonest organism? E. coli. So then, of course, around the perineum, E. coli. So the urinary tract and these uh, lower urinary tract as well as uh, this vaginal region, E. coli. So when the child born, so they might, they can swallow these, inf these infected amniotic fluid, and these things can go into the lungs, uh, then it come on, it will go to circulation, then they will have sepsis, as well as they can have meningitis, right? That is the commonest organism. That's why for the neonatal sepsis, we give gentamicin for the gram-negative coverage, right? Got it? So the E. coli, E. coli, E. coli is the commonest, commonest, commonest. At the same time, there is an, again another very common one is there, that is GBS, group beta hemolytic streptococci, Again, it is also extremely common in units. So how does that happen? So you must have seen, this is very common in children who born fall in a pre-labor rupture of membrane. So this GBS secretes some enzymes, uh, proteolytic enzymes, which will weaken the amniotic membrane and it will lyse. 
So it will get ruptured. So when they have free term, free labor of rupture of membrane, you must have learned in your genomes, taking a high vaginal swab and giving erythromycin for mother, right? So why is that giving positive coverage? Because to eradicate this, GBS. So again, these children can get colonized with GBS. So they can have sepsis as well as they can have meningitis. So the GBS is very important. So that's why neonatal sepsis be treated with gentamicin as well as penicillin. So penicillin is to eradicate these uh, GBS and the uh, gentamicin is to eradicate E. coli, right? Got it? So at the same time, guys, uh, but when it comes to the meningitis, you treat with tepataxin, right? For the sepsis, penicillin and gentamicin. When it, uh, when it goes to the brain, so the, the drug of choice will be tepataxin, right? Good. So there's another important organism is there, again, which might ask in your MCQs, that is Listeria monocytogen, right? So the why it is important? The Listeria is common causative organism if you especially see if the child has passed meconium prematurely, right? So why these children pass meconium? You must have learned in your medicine. You can Baba Kakka Paskar Lakya Nekar. Baba Kakka Paskar Anayi, why they pass meconium? Because when they have fetal distress, Baba Ata Hypoxia Hari Mokakarina, they go into fetal distress. And what happens is they then come here, neurons, these, uh, these signals will separate to the GI tract of this infer neonate fetus. Then what happens is these anal sphincter get relaxed and they will pass this meconium to the amniotic fluid. The amniotic fluid will get stained with the meconium. Right? So usually you have these neural connections and everything to the anus. These children should be ideally well mature. So usually you will see me passage of meconium in term and post term. But if you see in a child passing meconium pre in a child is pre term, that it is for high, this is When the meconium pass curl, no matter if CTG get tachycardia, bradycardia, or ARM, no matter when the meconium in the meconium, in the pre term child. So then you need to think how you have a high degree of suspicion. So that is. Listeria, listeria, listeria. Why it is important? Because antibiotic is different. Treating antibiotics. So where are you treat with? What is the drug of choice for listeria? That is very good for Adil Shah. That is ampicillin, 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 right? So that's why you need to have rough, uh, you need to have an idea that the causative organisms as well as the best management options. Good. So that's about neonates and the children. So sometimes the children who have immunocompromised can have TB fungal, as well as the children who are they are in the long term ICU setup PBU, right? The neonatal ICU, they can have like uh, very resistant organisms, right? Staph aureus, Pseudomonas, and Acinetobacters. But again, we don't ask those are very dangerous organisms. But we don't ask in your exams very frequently. Why is that? Because we want good house officers rather than ICU MOs. Okay, got it? So you want to create good. So as a student, what do you need to know? What do you need to learn to become a good house officer? When you become a house officer, to have a good competent medical officer or a senior house officer, right? So when you become a registrar, you need to have good knowledge to become a good consultant. When you become a consultant, to become a good professor, right? So that's how, right? So you need to know what is your role. Are you one of the consultant? No. Are you the registrar? You want to create a good house officer. So you need to learn, know what is important to become a good house officer. So we will be teaching what is really necessary. So if you learn those things, that would be enough to pass very high marks in your exams as well as to score very, like, like to perform, like to have a very happy time in during your internship, right? So when you have a very good knowledge, your internship also will be very easy and everyone will praise you, right? So learn things in a rational way. So uh, 
and we don't want you all to become a attendant or a nurse. Keep that also in your mind. Or in all age, at any level, like that, we will fail. So sometimes you think why students get fail, especially when it comes to the Bible, because you had lack of clinical exposure. Name me. Right, because you get fail because you have lack of theory knowledge. That is the reason. Right, not your lack of clinical knowledge, clinical exposure. Clinical exposure can be passed. You know, the nurses should have or the attendants should have the highest marks. So they are all the time they are in the hospital. No, I'm going to lay down. I'm not talking about. But they don't know what is the underlying theory behind. So they can't work out and grasp the things. So it's about problem in the theory. You know, the nurse to the end, the nurse privacy other mean no, and where in come? Attendant in no. Cleaning staff to care in no. Consultant to me how do you know? The consultant to me exposure to how do you know? Yeah, yeah, how do you know? The fire get to work every day, yeah. Right? Got it? So don't think that you are because you are in a lack of these clinical exposure. It's completely about lack of knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. If you have very good knowledge, the, these exams, whatever they, all these exams are extremely easy because we are assessing theory. The office surgery ke la operation ne ka karanda bhi na hoti. Nahi nahi. Jin naam ke la surgery hysterectomy ka karanda na. Nahi. That's not theory. Right? So you need to know theory. That's all for all the subjects. Okay. Very simple. Okay, so they learn the things in a rational way, so you can score very high marks as well as in MCQs and SPs. Good. So finally, when it comes to these, the other important thing, the VP shunt, VP shunt, VP shunt. What is VP shunt? VP shunt is guys, what that is ventricular peritoneal shunt. Where you will see in the children with hydrocephalus, where to neutralize these uh, excessive accumulation of CSF, we put a shunt. Why ventricle like a dana shunt? Ventricular peritoneal. So it will attach to the Peritoneum, methan in the la methan. So all these uh, uh, like uh, excessive CSF will drain to the peritoneal cavity. That is the VP shunt, VP shunt, VP shunt. So VP shunt, what is like if you see a child, hydrocephalus child, who is it a VP shunt, getting a suspecting a CNS infection, what is the likely commonest causative organism? So that can ask in your MCQs. SDL shunt, what is this? Sacrarius. Huh? Sacrarius. Mm -hmm. Any other different answers? Any different answers? I can't hear you, dear. Who's this? Yeah, Lama Matakati Agan. So the peritoneum, what is the commonest uh, organism? Sometimes you might see E. coli, but it's difficult to ascend to that level. Right? But it is also possible, one possible organism. But here the important message is, guys, what sometimes these skin common cells can ascend and penetrate and go. So what is the most commonest, these commonest and important skin common cell? So that forgive is negative staphylococcus or the staph epidermidis, right? So that is the importance, right? That is the commonest organism. So, so you need to add some antibiotics to cover that as well. So if you are suspecting, uh, if you uh, may see any infection in a child with BP sham, right? Got it? So because it is these kind of infections are common, staph epidemics, they have skin common cell, where it can like commonly can cause, like when there's a shunt, maybe a cannula, right? Maybe a C, like uh, CV line, prosthetic valves, right? So when they have such, so these staph epidemics infections are very, very common, right? So keep that in your mind. So treatment of the treatment will can get changed. Okay, right, good. So hope you had an idea. So then I have the other, what is the commonest organism? sir? Streptococcus pneumonia. What is the, highest, the most important organ which causes highest morbidity or the localized complications? That is hemophilus influenza. What is the most important organism which causes highest mortality? That is Neisseria meningitis. So if you know those things, that is common, right? Good, so right. Guys, then we are quickly discussing about the risk factors. So it is a extremely like, no, it's just having a rough idea, right? 
So the, here the important thing is, guys, what so these organisms usually be like uh, very common in where when there's a closed space is there, right? So it's, uh, in daycare centers, nurseries, and prisons, these spreading of these meningococcal strains, meningia, these organisms are very common. So in addition to that, guys, the there are like individual uh, their own complications are there, right? So again, one of the important thing is, guys, what well, these organisms can go to the brain through CSA, right? So if there's a brain in skull trauma, hold it again, hold it So when there's an open skull fracture, of course they can have, they like they can have uh, meningitis later. So when there's a brain surgery, sometimes craniotomy, right? Sometimes like normal tumor or something like that. Again, they can have an injury later. Again, the lumbar puncture, you need to take all these precautions, right? So if you don't take proper aseptic precautions, give me a second. Good. Can you all hear me? Yeah. So if you don't take proper precautions, then again, they can have, as well as guys, so if the child has a neural tube defect, so sometimes like medical student, right? So right? So that is possible. So, so those are the things are, right, have a rough idea. So again, sometimes can have local spread. So sometimes their primary origin can be sinusitis, otitis media, maybe a dental abscess, and can directly spread. It can be membranes leak to the tear So sometimes again, guys, again, it can be a distant spread. So the infective focus can be there some somewhere, and it might spread in the venous system. Again, the pneumonia, uh, lung abscess, right? Uh, maybe empyema, very common. Sometimes bronchiectasis and right to left shunt. So can someone tell me an example for right to left shunt in heart? What is the commonest one? Anyone? Can someone unmute and say? Right to left shunt. Dakun patte in the narka leti kamam patte ten. Yes, Nimesha, can you tell? Yeah, yeah the tetralogy of phallet, right? So the tetralogy of phallet is very important, right? So they can have sinus infections commonly, right? So sometimes endocarditis vegetation is again very important. So, right. So then, guys, sometimes immunodeficiencies again important. So, congenital immunodeficiencies, as well as more importantly, guys, one of the important thing is that is splenectomy, splenectomy or hyposplenism. So, why is this splenectomy is very important? So guys, you know, sometimes children with thalassemia, hydrospirocytes, when they have massive spleen, we remove the spleen, right? But the problem is, guys, what? the spleen is the site where it, it, which produces the, these, you must have heard, these complement system, complement. Complements, you know, so C3, C4, right, good. So these things produce from, these spleen. Why those things are important? Because, guys, these complements are extremely important to destroy capsulated organisms, capsulated organisms, capsulated organisms. Right? So, when these complements are there, usually what they do is what it does is, so it will create a hole with an impact capsulated organism in Sidrakhan. So, all these fluids, the water will drag into this, and these bacteria will get lice. But that action will not be there the children who have undergone a splenectomy or those who have high post splenic, right? So that is very important. So children who have undergone a splenectomy, they are vulnerable to develop uh, these DNS infections as well as the children uh, who have high post as well as uh, uh, children who have con congenital complement deficiencies. Yes, they are vulnerable to develop. DNS infection. So here the important message is, guys, what? Hyposplenism, the main example is sickle cell, sickle cell, sickle cell. So they will have auto-destruction of the spleen. Initially, they will have high, 
splenomegaly. After sometimes they will have hyposplenism or the so destruction of the spleen. So they will have immunodeficiency. So they hear the important message is guys one. So now tell me, pneumococcal, is it a capsulated organism or not? Yes. Meningococcal, is it a capsulated or not? Yes. Hemophilus influenza, is it a capsulated or not? Yes. E. coli, is it a capsulated or not? Yes. Yes. So to destroy all these things, again, yes, it is extremely important. But adult children, like bigger children, these, the streptococcus pneumonia, hemophilus influenza, and these Nicira meningitis are extremely important. So that is, you need to have a very clear idea, right? So that's why children who are undergoing planning to uh, for an splenectomy, so we are giving these vaccines prior to the surgery, right? To prevent these kind of infections. So we are giving pneumococcal, meningococcal, as well as hip vaccine prior to splenectomy surgery, right? So that is extremely important. Are you clear up to now? Are you clear? Great. Any questions? Guys, because next topic is the more, one of the most important areas. So I want you all to concentrate before we start the next, these signs and symptoms and everything. So up to now, are you clear? Excellent, good. Good, if you have any questions, you can ask. And again, a small, again, request. So please switch on your cameras as well as please put your real names. That is extremely important, right? So please switch on your cameras. That is important. So you don't need to get scared. You can talk, right? So that is important. Why uh, I'm asking to switch on your cameras? Why I'm asking sometimes question? Guys, that is some, like a part of your training, right? So when you become a doctor, you should be a smart person. Right? How do they live? Panel or paracetamol? They it There's nothing, no magic. So even they sometimes they don't give it and they give some nasal drops. <laughs> so only the paracetamol and nasal drops. That's all. Okay, then for you do that. But there's a difference. What is the difference? One thing is the one of the most important thing is guys the appearance and the way you talk, right? So you, that's why, guys, you need to have confidence. Whatever you say to the patients, you need to have confidence. Right? That is the difference. That's why Viva, you all have these uh, local grads, of course, they have these um, long cases and those things, just long cases. You all have observed history taking. So we are assessing how you communicate and everything. We will not pass you. We will not pass you. Right? Confidence with a Boruki, we will not pass you. So you need to have those skills, right? So, right? So you, that's why it's a part of your training. So you all are going to become doctors, right? So hang in the day Okay. So the appearance is very important. Dress nicely, as well as talk nicely, right? Then of course, uh, everyone will love you. Okay. Got it? So that is very important when it comes to the hospital, when you're going to the hospital, right? Okay. Right. Good. Rather than like wearing this Majan suit and everything, right? Some people wear, but I usually don't like. 
right pediatrics ियस So is it a inflammation of the brain parenchyma? So I told you it's an inflammation of the brain parenchyma. But is it something generalized or is it something focal? Well, the brain ne kam idhi me no adhen ekta ek khel a certain a particular part ka the idhi me ne. So tell me, any idea? Anyone? 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 So is it a localized one or is it a or the focal or the localized one or is it a generalized one? Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Nimesha, can you give me answer? Focal condition. Excellent. So, but focal and hidden muka di. It's a generalized. No, no, no. This particular part will get inflamed, inflamed, inflamed in the brain parenchyma. So, encephalitis. So, the inflammation of the brain parenchyma. But they will be certain part will get inflamed, right? So, when we when we are discussing about before we move into the symptoms and signs. What is the commonest presentation of meningitis or encephalitis? So CNS infections. What is the commonest presentation? What is the commonest presentation? Spirit all ten and vadiya malamay karna mulma presentation ne kama kadu. Muli ma vadi pura ma kiya na de ma kadu. What are the two common? There are two common presentations. Are there? I got fever headache. I got fever headache. Yes. The first one is fever and headache. उनाइन Because there are so many mimicking conditions are there. So even a simple viral fever, even dengue, they can, they will present with fever. And they put only only what they have to do. Simple viral fever, simple dengue, right? So some they present with fever and headache, and fever and convulsion. Fever and convulsion in children sometimes they can have what uh, it can be a sim, just a febrile convulsion, either simple or complex febrile convulsion. Got it? So not the coffee, the coffee, the coffee. So there are some mimicking conditions are there. Sometimes, can you tell me some other more like some other differential diagnosis? Fever and a convulsion. So see, any infections, the febrile convulsions, any other differential diagnosis which you need to think when a child comes with a fever and a convulsion. Who not the coffee, the coffee? He can't do any thumb on other conditions. Tell me, tell me, tell me. You put a guy. What do you think, dear? Simple, common things. What do you like? It's a common thing. Very good, dear child. Any idea? Nipuna. Doesn't matter. On our side. 
last itu kalau dua ni lah hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, electrolyte. This is extremely important, guys. The children with fever sometimes they can have vomiting. They have like who like who appetite. They might vomit. Their their intake will be very poor. The rat, dawal takal atne hariye kar rat mukut makal atne budhiye ganna. Next day morning they can have fever on top of that convulsion. So when you come, when the child got admitted to the hospital, just check in the CBS like you might see hypoglycemia, right? So the low CBS, right? So hypoglycemia that is. Hypoglycemia, right? Fever and a like just associated hypoglycemia in the normal viral fever is still possible, right? Then the other important thing is, guys, what again sometimes electrolyte imbalances. One of the important thing is hyponatremia. Again, sometimes following a diarrhea, vomiting, they can have electrolyte imbalances. Again, they can have clotting. Good. So those are the common differential diagnoses which you need to think. So when a child comes with a fever and a convulsion. So, I told you the common two presentations are fever and headache as well as fever and convulsion. So, but you need to find out whether it is CNS infections or something else. So, to find out that, you need to analyze these things. So, one of the important thing is, guys, there are three, even I have mentioned, signs of symptoms of primary focus, signs and symptoms of sepsis. Again, you will not be able to differentiate, but the most important ones are the signs of meningeal irritations as well as signs of race ICP. Where they can come in, Taruda and only they can. Up in Kiva, you need when your child comes, you need to evaluate several things. One thing is signs and symptoms of primary focus, then the sepsis, right? The third one and the fourth one are the most important ones that is meningeal irritation features, as well as race intracranial pressure features. Where they can come in, when they can come most important. Highlight. At the same time, write it. Organism specific sign. Organism specific sign. Right. So I have. I'm not going to in, discuss into detail. But is when it comes about the signs and symptoms of primary focus, sometimes the mothers might say, uh, "Doctor, Baba, the satiya kata khaling khane paso khane khak kuman tibba apni private ki labeet gatta." Wait, again, doctor, antibiotic wagya duna duna kane kek kumata. Dila mamitin davas de kakya duna duna mam behitiga it was it in now. Child is having a fever and a convulsion and like uh, having these meningeal irritation features and everything. What would be the primary focus? For the main primary focus, yeah, it is otitis media. Otitis media get a bargain to treat color, it has a scent to them. It has penetrated the meninges and now has developed meningitis. So the primary history of the primary history is the same as the Not the partial treated bacterial meningitis. Even meningeal irritation features the same as the partial treated bacteria. So, the first time is the same as the same as the Right? Got it? Good. So the other important thing is, guys, that sometimes a um, mother might say, Isella Timba Tadunai Kassai Kassa Tibba, it was a private deal of Behit Gatta, right? It was a Unabasa, I'm eating antibiotic Namatua. That is what pneumonia and some maybe abscess of this thing. Later on has developed. Got it? So sometimes mother might say, Satya Mayata Satya Katakali, with a Himbiri Sava Tibba. Himbiri Sava Launai Tibba. Then you can do that. So, coriceal symptoms has been there. So, if the child has coriceal symptoms, what does that indicate? It's a viral etiology. Right? If the child had coriceal symptoms, so it's likely a viral etiology. So, it can be either viral meningitis, reality, or it can be encephalitis sometimes. Right? So, coriceal symptoms can be there. Right? Got it. Good. So sometimes the signs of sepsis means they can have high grade fever, chills, and rigors, right? So maybe hypertension, those things. It can be seen in whatever the bacterial condition. So we are moving to the most important one, that is the meningeal irritation features and the race ICP features. So when it comes to the meningitis and encephalitis, the most important, most important, most important message is, guys, what the both conditions will have meningoencephalitis, meningoencephalitis, meningoencephalitis. That is signs and symptoms of 
meningeal irritation features as well as raised icp features so meningitis are mokada they both in both conditions they will be an overlap hematoma thi no meningeal irritation features as well as can have raised icp features but the, here the important important message is guys one meningitis the meningeal irritation meningeal irritation meningeal irritation features are very prominent very prominent very prominent compared to raised icp features but encephalitis the raised icp features are very early and prominent compared to meningeal irritation features got it so meningitis meningeal irritation features are very early as well as uh prominent compared to raised icp but they also can have raised icp features but those things comes after sometimes and those things are less prominent compared to meningeal irritation disease that is the most important most important most important message so okata taru dahayak daagatta kamanna because this will decide your like a uh, lot of questions in your like answers in your sba paper right got it good so what are the meningeal irritation features guys so there are three important meningeal irritation features are there so any child of course they can have headache no i'm not going to highlight that so that is very non specific no there are more specific things are there that is what the photophobia 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 right phonophobia neck pain or stiff and no kama yet what is photophobia amma kena what what the mother say out ियाल no otibila there sometimes sometimes you might have experience tamare girlfriend katha karadi karala kacha 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 gana so kana mata mari kana do api na that right and that is a different story sometimes sometimes amma kiyaddi 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 right hari amma right so that is phonophobia right so here the, the children of course they might say hambile mamma saddi wedi sadmi kar it kaya ganne pa kiyanne right katha karanne pa kiyanne amaru right that is phonophobia sometimes when you attach to the this monitor tick 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 hospital like sometimes these children might say ani amaru amma me 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 monitor ka off karanne kiyanne right so that is phonophobia right sometimes these things are not 100% specific right sometimes you might see other conditions as well but when it associated with fever and other features you need to have a high degree of suspicion una nathuwa den oh e dek vitarak den migraine walta photophobia phonophobia eno right but it they will not have fever no? right got it so you need to like fever with these things and the photophobia you need to have high degree of suspicion so then guys what what the other important thing is guys what the neck pain and the neck stiffness some children might say neck pain that is the cause right so bella ridena honda tam bella holawanna da neck pain ridena ta kuma neck stiffness is guys what some like bella thadai bella namanda ba holla gilala wage thama inne අම්ම සමහර වෙලාවක මේ කොල්ල පොල්ලක් ගිල්ලා වගේ තමයි ඉන්න කියලා නේ බෙල්ල නමන්ද කරන්න බෑ right they can't move the neck stiff that is neck stiffness neck pain so it is a more important it comes under a sign more important but sometimes you can tell it as a symptom as well right so that is those are the most important symptom so when it comes to the signs there are three important signs are there which you can elicit easily that is first one is neck stiffness neck stiffness neck stiffness where you keep the child in the lying position la me have ala karla head neck right right so what you do is you you keep your hand behind the head right popping on the kela you suddenly flex the neck what they say awa gana right so they, it will be like very stiff you can't bend it as well as they will shout they will scream right very painful right stiff so that is neck stiffness neck stiffness neck stiffness so that is very common in cns infection but it is not very specific right 
is not specific. You might see in some other conditions as well, but it is very classic in CNS infection. So then the Koenig sign. So the Koenig sign is, guys, what you flex the hip and the knee. What done is uh, hip flex and the knee, right? You flex the hip and the knee, and you passively suddenly stretch it. Make a big cut. So then they will have severe resistance and pain over the back. And they will be a resistance. They will have resistance. Right? They will not allow you to uh, uh, relax the leg, right? Extend it. Okay? So that is Koenig sign, Koenig sign, Koenig. Then the third one is guys, what the Brudinsky sign, Brudinsky sign. So again, like uh, sometimes it is uh, important in small kids, infants. So when you flex it, when you flex the neck, so the, the child to relieve the pain, sometimes they flex their hip as well as the knee. We are Bella Namadi, Danisai Kakulai Naman. That is Brudinsky sign. So you will see below one year, but not so below six months, right? So around one and a half to six months, one and a half years. So you will see that commonly, right? When the important message is, guys, well, the small kids, especially children who are less than 18 months, especially infants, and sometimes even less than 18 months, so their frontals are open. So these, even the meninges get inflamed, these things can get buffered. So sometimes these signs are not so prominent and you might not be able to appreciate. So in such situation, what else can you change? For example, child is a four-month-old child suspecting a CNS infection. Now, anything else you can check? Any sign? Anyone? Anyone? A smart person? Come on, guys. Rudinsky sign we mentioned. It is sometimes like a before six months again, you might not be able to elicit much. Anyone? Come on, guys. Very practical thing. Very easy. Yes. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent. So, guys, come on, guys. It's common sense. So they are the difference I, I mentioned, no guys, their front tunnels are open. So the, you, when you palpate it, the front tunnels will be very bulged. So that is very common, very classic in the very small infants, right? So the front tunnel, bulging of front tunnels, bulging of front tunnels, bulging of front tunnels, again, important. So you bring the child comes with a fever and the other symptoms, you need to have a high degree of suspicions. So bulging front tunnels, bulging front tunnels, bulging front tunnels is extremely important. Got it? Good. Excellent. So guys, so those are the important many features, symptoms, and signs of meningeal irritation. So sometimes, guys, what well, sometimes you might see features of race, ICP, race, ICP, race, ICP, right? So these many clinical symptoms are more common as well as you will see early in children with encephalitis. You will see these features even in meningitis, but it can be a little bit late, right? So there are important five symptoms are there. What are those? Matagati and the first one is the most, most, most important one. Altered consciousness, altered consciousness, altered consciousness. Sihiya madhavena. Sihiya aduvena. So the altered consciousness, sometimes in your SBS, they might mention in a different way. Highlight that, that is what? They might mention that GCS is coming down, GCS is dropping, GCS is dropping. That is important. So the normal GCS is 15, now they might say, like uh, on admissions, the child's GCS was 12, child's GCS was 30, child's GCS was 9. Uh -huh. Then you know, uh, child's con uh, consciousness is going down. So, the highlighter, the highlighter, the highlighter, that is the most real support the diagnosis of encephalitis. So, sometimes these children can be drowsy, right? So, 
then can be irritable taus can niti mata hai hamile me niti mata sometimes irritable right so alla ne nurusana o taraha yana hamile me alla ne alla ne ka visikara right and that is irritable right okay so then guys right so sometimes they can have vomiting but not just vomiting they can have projectile kiri bila bila gal dana ekane me projectile or early morning vomiting you need to have high degree of suspicious as well as they can have pics or the convulsions again you need to have high degree of suspicious so those features you might see in both see meningitis and the these uh, uh, encephalitis but the encephalitis these symptoms develop early right so the one out of those five the most important feature is the altered consciousness or the altered the reduced disease right that is very classic in the uh, these can keep alive good so when it comes to signs guys so when you're clinically suspecting race icp one of the most important and the earliest thing what you need to do is you need to check the fundus 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 scope the garden and balan on today so there is an evidence of papilloedema 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 that is extremely important sometimes small kids they don't keep their head uh, in a curved like in a position they might like it's they might close their eyes sometimes very difficult to elicit So then, of course, you need to look at the other important signs. Sometimes you might see focal neurological signs, where you might see some cranial nerve palsies or hemiparesis. I take a better pun on it, and that cranial nerve ka palsy ka kya hila. So you will see in encephalitis commonly, right? And also sometimes you will see features of upper motor neuron signs bilaterally, generalized bilaterally, right? So even these things are focal. Keep taking focal. Good actually. ियलो uh, So sometimes in the terminal stage, when the brain size is so significant, so they will have hypertension. But to neutralize, to balance that, so they will have a, as a like the reflex. We call it as Cushing's reflex. They will have bradycardia, bradycardia, bradycardia. So the hypertension and bradycardia again we might see. So those are the important features. So altered consciousness. Papilledema and bilateral upper motor neuron signs; those are the most important features, which will support uh, and which will, which are the earliest and the more prominent manifestations of race ICP or encephalitis. Got it? Good. So sometimes, guys, the organism specific signs can be there, right? Some have a lot of maker organism maker specific signs in that, which will support your diagnosis. For example, many. For example, um, meningococcal meningitis. Sometimes you might see a specific sign. Meningococcal na mukado ay classically dakin ne. You will see a meningococcal rash, right? So what kind of a rash? What do you call that rash? We will discuss in detail. What do you call that rash, guys? So we call it as purpuric, 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 which occurs following inflammation of the small vessels. Blood vessels will inflame, and our red blood cells will extravate to the subcutaneous tissue, and you will see purpura. So the purpuric rash usually will see following vasculitis conditions, and meningococcus sepsis will cause vasculitis, and that is so classic. So the purpuric rash, purpuric rash, purpuric rash. So if you see that, or more. You need to start your treatment very early, otherwise child can die, die, die. Got it? So that is extremely important. So sometimes some like doctors are unable to differentiate. They might label it as petechiae obruses. So if they, if you notice petechiae obruses in the patients, if they have mentioned, so still consider it as meningococcus, even though the classic rash is purpura. Good. So sometimes, guys. So well, assume. If what is the commonest organism? I will ask a small bit. What is the commonest organism which causes encephalitis? Encephalitis commonly ma atikar na organism me kamo kada anywhere? Very good, very good. Ah, yes, Patum. Can Patum can you unmute and say? Uh, herpes zoster. 
Yeah, the HSV type one, right? So the herb is softer, but again, the important thing is type one, type one, type one. Type one is commonly causing encephalitis, right? So that is very important. So the type one is very important. That is the commonest organism which causes encephalitis. So if you if you are thinking about in HSV type one, what is the classic sign, classic symptoms or signs which you know? Yeah. Uh, there can be gingival stomatitis in like uh, older children, but also like if it's a neonate, they can have on pressure points, they can have like uh, vesicle eruptions as well. Very good, uh, Patrick. So here the important message is, guys, what I told you, the commonest organism is HSV type 1. So the HSV type 1, guys, by, as I mentioned, in encephalitis, it's not a global one. It's a focal. But here the important message is, guys, what? So the HSV type 1 is the commonest organism, but it will classically include, right? The inferior frontal region, inferior frontal, as well as the temporal region, right? Inferior frontal and the temporal region. Frontal lobe, temporal region, inflamed currents. So classically, you will see those. So when you take an EEG or a CT or MRI, you will see there's some focal changes or slowing of EEG in the frontal region as well as in the temporal region. So here the important message is, guys, one. Now, tell me, inferior frontal region. Yes, Tarushi, what do you think? No, I will ask from someone else. Pasindu. Yes, Pasindu, what do you think? What will happen if there's a damage to the inferior frontal? Uh, so we'll see like uh, focal signs of the region, like he will, they will have like problems in like the coordination and the thinking and like uh, thought in that area and in the temporal region, like focal signs for that region. So are you are you in Sri Lanka or abroad? Uh, uh, abroad. Oh, okay, right, right. right so anyway, so you have just nicely and everything. Uh, uh, so, so I mean that's why I asked, right? So anyway, now I I then he can like all, so all these animals they don't wear any clothes. The aliens they also don't wear any clothes. But you have dressed very nicely, and you are talking very nicely. You are not sitting on the chair. You are, what you talk is very rational. What is the reason? Um, the frontal lobe is like yeah uh, because your frontal lobe inferior frontal lobe frontal lobe is functioning very well that is the reason right so you will you will have like the behavior is mainly controlled by this inferior frontal so right so you will not lose this this inhibition right what inhibit karagina hamadeema dino ata itena samahara ela ata me hema deyak karanna one kiyala inata ehema deyak karanna ne Right? So not you know, the no and the behavior counter rational is because of this inferior frontal part. So here the important message is that no after he did on the last time. Again, no, that is uh, right, decent because not you know, the no So that is inferior frontal. So here the important message is guys, what so when there's a damage to the inferior frontal, they will have behavioral, behavioral, behavioral changes. When it's damage to the temporal region, they can have impaired cognitive function. So the be alteration of the behavior, alteration of the behavior is extremely important. That is one of the important signs in HSV type 1 encephalitis. So that's why, right? So the encephalitis is also possible, but it is more common in HSV type 1. So what is the importance? So the mothers will say, Ane doctor me me hari amuto ine denga spiritual unagat tarbasse. Ah, hema tamaya ma unavikara. What again? Right? You need to think. Right? Okay. So you need to think about what is exactly going on. So they will classically have behavior alteration of the behavior. You know, Right? Right? Something like that they might say. Right, so 
that is they might see they might have hallucination sometimes they can have altered behavior some sometimes they amma ekka tara hayana amma kawuda anduranne right eha patte so that is behavioral change that is very classic in encephalitis specifically hsv type 1 so in your sbs if they have mentioned such that is almost always it's about encephalitis but it good so then guys but so that is very important so sometimes you know hsv type 1 okay oh, well, you must have learned sometimes they can have primary features of primary problem that's not they are always so hsv type 1 and type 2 kela dekha kina type 1 commonly where do you see so around the oral cavity right so i think in the telegram group i have previously i sent a video also classic it and a case in our there is a classic hemorrhagic right Pustules and blisters are there. That is very classic HSV, right? So around the very ill, right, very ill child, and there's an hemorrhagic. These pustules are there that you will see in HSV type one. Okay, around the oral cavity. Okay, so you might see, but not all. So then, guys, what? So that is important. Sometimes, but the HSV type two commonly involves the genitalia. So genitalia, okay, that means so children HSV type two is Less common, right? Why? Yes. Because the naughty weather can make any lama, right? The other one, HSV type two, the yes man. But still, it is possible. How? The early neon neonatal period or early infancy. How? Because so it can be the HSV type two can be colonized in maternal genitalia. So during delivery, they might aspirate these infected amniotic fluid. And these children can get infected, but sometimes, but we, but we know this. So these children again can have fever and a convulsion. But you will practically notice the pustules, right? And the pustules can be there in the pressurized point, right? Pressurized point. Eka tibbot, you know this is about encephalitis, right? So they will have pustules. Pustules can be there mainly the pressurized point. So when the child is very ill. You might attach to an blood pressure cuff. What is a cuff? Because I am sure that I am not sure that I am not sure. Sometimes you might attach ECG electrode. When you remove that, next day pass it. If you if the child delivered with a vacuum delivery, force it for vacuum. I am not sure. So the pressurized points you will see these pass it. Clear? Good. So those are the common ones. So if it is just like if it is very severe, so you will see. Classic chicken pox rash, right? So what what is a chicken pox rash? So you will see papules over the trunk initially and will distribute to periphery later. Got it? So you organ or all the organic organism specific signs you might see in some condition. Hi, please after now. So oh, good. So quickly re recalling. So signs and symptoms. So meningitis and encephalitis both will have meningo encephalitis, but the meningitis. The meningeal irritation features are more prominent. Encephalitis, the raised ICP features are more prominent. So the meningeal mening, meningeal irritation features are the symptoms: the photophobia, phonophobia, neck pain or stiffness. When it comes to signs, neck stiffness, the Kernick sign, the Brudinsky sign, and the bulging of frontal. So when it comes to the raised ICP features. so they can have classically altered levels of consciousness or the reduction in the gcs as well as they can be drowsy irritable vomiting uh, as well as fits can be there when it comes to signs you might see papillary edema focal neurological signs as well as bradycardia and hypertension and more importantly they can have bilateral upper motor neuron signs where they will have exaggerated then reflexes and increased tone sometimes they can have or these Organism specific signs. Signs. We are meningococcal. If it is meningococcal, you will see classic perfusory rash. If it is HSV one, you will see sometimes perioral hemorrhagic pustules. But in addition to that, classically they will have alteration of the behavior, 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 plus or minus cognitive impairment. HSV type two in early infancy or the neonatal period, you will see pustules over the pressurized points. They are very similar. You will see. These parasitic larvae starting blisters, uh, starting from trunk, 
and spreading to them. Got it? Clear? Pediatrics is easy. Right? So, if you learn the things very rational, you can see. So, management of CNS infections. All right. So, we will start. Uh, are you clear up to now? Any questions up to now, guys? So, we are moving to the next important one. Again, they like why, why this part is important because there are some significant changes are there in the recent guidelines. That's why I, this part is important, right? Okay, got it. Good. So, right. So, guys, when a child comes with a meningitis, so why these children die? Lama marinia meningitis. Is it emergency or not? It's an emergency, right? So these children will die. So meningitis dies, but they will be an infection and inflammation of the meninges, they will release so much of cytotoxic with many of the cytokines which are very toxic, so it can damage the C and nerve cells. So they can have brain damage or create to delay the treatment, they can have brain damage and like brain are that so they will not be able to become a doctor like yours if you don't identify early and treat. Okay. So that's important. So it will cause a lot of more babies. As well as guys, one of the important things is guys, it can cause more death. One of the marine. One thing is guys, but when there is a significant inflammation, so raise ICP, the brain can get herniated and compress the uh, respiratory and spinal center, uh, respiratory and cardiac center in the brain stem, and they can die. At the same time, sometimes these infections can rapidly spread. There's a significant like focus is there. Right? Bacterial focus is there, where it, which has a poor antibiotic penetration. So they can have sepsis, septic shock, and they can die due to sepsis. So sepsis in the marina full on, so they can die due to race ICP features, and race ICP, and they can die. So here the important thing is that uh, that's why it's an emergency. You need to identify, you need to know the gravity, and you need to start the treatment. Why you all become doctors? To earn money, you may. You have forgotten. Then, maybe we're after the one naked. You all are going abroad because you want to earn money. No? That's the only advantage. Right? So, if you want to earn money, Manamali, then you can earn more. You all are like friendly. If you want to earn money, do a YouTube channel. Right? So, Money is important, but you can have their life like you have a comfortable life. This is enough. You have a comfortable life. But right, but there are so many other advantages are there when you become a doctor. So the important thing is, guys, what so the people will respect. You can't get that respect in any other job. As well as that respect you can't get in any other country. Right? I'm over. So you will be labeled as a very bright person. Right? So here that is that name you can't get from anything else. And at the same time, guys, um, in Sri Lanka, the other important thing is like when you stay in Sri Lanka, you can do whatever you want. So keep your respect. So when you go to UK or Australia, you can you select a school for your children? Yeah. Yeah, you can. If you want to consult a, a good surgeon, can you do that? Or private deal area? No. Or GP out and no, GP will select the the closest surgeon who can do that particular surgery. So you they will give you the Do we, do you need to if your parents get ill? Can you treat early in other countries? Private and the lazy man, right? They will be so on dating list. You can do in what you want, right? 
banking kaya ang doon din eh. Thank you, Tati. Right? Good. Right? You will have, you will not have that in other country. So, again, like, uh, don't think all the time in negative way. Right? There are so much to possible. If it is so negative, the LIH, the, all these consultants should go abroad. But none of them have gone abroad. All these doctors at the large or NHS, right? Very few have gone for their personal other problem. Not because of any, right? So don't think. But when you do ERPM, what's the problem? You need to go to periphery. Maybe. So in the other countries also, Australia also, you need to go to peripheries and to have done many. Like, People are putting to this Brisbane, but the reality is they are in Queensland. Again, Queensland also, it's a, like a Aborigines area. That's the reality, no? There are Queen and Queensland and Queen in area. So, right, Brisbane can it. Queensland is again like Lanka, is Tungun and Lope. See? See? But here, even that peripheries are more comfortable than here. That is true. But here the important message is what? So, Mugula Athatvela in known? Intern Kohida Kalanda Puga? You can do it even at LRH NHS. My house office is a foreign graduate. Another. So, at LRH. When I was at Gampa, again, foreign graduates are there, my students. Okay, so yaka kinne tarang kalu ne during RHO period. So if you like, if you do pediatrics, of course you can stay around Colombo in for during your intern as well as RHO period. I let me do in the kinne. So MO period initial first appointment as MO SHO. Yes, sometimes you might need to go periphery. But do you need to stay there? No, you can select like difficult stations. If you select like difficult station, you can come to Colombo in a different place in one and a half uh, years. So you will be all the time, you will be there in main teaching hospitals. Then my students will come in HSL, LRH, right? 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 So don't think that this is a uh, no. one and a half years only. If you want to come early, out of the Kahamara Kinnad then. So do a small diploma. Now the students look again, they are in Colombo, like Master AI data in it. Or even zero, RHO period they extend. So they are doing some diploma, like easy one, disaster management, case management, or critical care, or something beneath, right? Something like that. Then come into Colombo, yeah, the geriatric. So don't think right over uh, here. Like you don't know the advantages and disadvantages and no, this he has been created for you all. Right? Learn it and negative. Don't think negative, right? Okay. So have positive attitude and learn. Know the reality. So if you don't have anything, it's okay. So after then it and you don't have a house. You don't have a car. Your car, house, but no wife also don't have anything, and your parents are not helping, and you are not a very smart person. Where yeah, you can build here, but a doctor are you? No, good man. No talent at all. Then you go abroad, right? Otherwise, think twice, right? So anyway, wherever you go, again these. Subject is same. You need to know these subjects thoroughly. So you can't do any other job, you know? What are you doing? Do a nursing. It will be more easy and more demanding. Right? You become a doctor, right? So you have forgotten. So somehow I'm a doctor's line. I don't know. Right? So think again, Pulwang, if you are treating the in a very correct way. If you are under treat, 
ඔගොල්ලෝ බිලීව් කරනවනේ ඉතින් පව් වැඩි වෙන්නේ නැහැ if you over treat ඒක බිලීව් කරනවා නම් පව් වැඩි වෙන්න එපා ඊළාම ගෑන් ටිබයටික් රෙසිස්ටන්ස් එනවා ඊළාම රයිට් රජයට පාඩු වෙයි so for example meningitis you are missing meningitis and you are treating it you are thinking about otitis media or something and you are giving power amoxicillin lama disabling target meningitis you can give cefotaxime but you are giving some bivalent you are giving meropenem over treat meropenem one vial is cost around 8000 or even more the cheapest one also 8000 and resistant and antibody penetration also not more than typical okay. so they learn the things in a rational way so then of course if you are believing in that also yes right so you will and we don't think now mom hit kara kila ping ham bina kila kanne treat in a very correct way so what ham okay good so let and the thing then when i can have it in fashion okay good so here the important thing is guys what management of cns infection so you need to know what is the management so first of all when there are 10 steps are there i have kept two blank areas so here the important message is guys what the first of all first of all first of all this uh, cns infection cns infection cns infection is an emergency 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 so they can die due to several things one thing is guys so it can impair the airway and breathing how it how is it possible yes how the commonly guys but so their gcs can get dropped especially in encephalitis so they might not be able to maintain their airway so with the race icp sometimes it can herniate and can suppress the, the this respiratory center so their respiratory rate can get dropped they might get completely apneic so then of course you may need to manage the airway and breathing airway breathing airway breathing so you might need to give oxygen you may need to ambu ventilate you may need to intubate and ventilate depending on the gcs so gcs you need to they need to have minimum of eight you know that right so to maintain the airway so airway breathing airway breathing airway breathing is extremely important then the circulation yes because majority significant number of uh, meningitis they die due to septicemia and septic shock so if you notice circulatory collapse you immediately resuscitate 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 with iv what iv normal saline bolus rapid 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 sometimes there will be a septic shock will be there you push you push the bolus as 20 ml per kg lamya kilo panahi kilo panah kiyana kochara the 20 ml per kg that is 1 liter one liter but you need to push it rapidly right otherwise child will die so you need to push it maybe put a two cannulas and put push it right so otherwise you will not be able to save the child so know the gravity so the abc 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 so if they are abc is unstable manage the abc manage the abc manage the abc so make sure even they present with meningeal irritation features or sicp features abc is the first it will uh, it is there in your sbs so abc management abc management abc management now dem mukadda prashne ogalange prashne mukadda you don't know whether it is circulatory stable or not so how do you know whether child is circulatory stable or not you need to check the pulse rate pulse volume capillary refilling time and the blood pressure so important thing is pulse rate is depends on the age you know the cut off Uh, capillary refilling time ideally should be less than 2 seconds the pulse volume should be good the blood pressure is one of the important thing we are most of you all are poor about that knowledge so what in the blood about blood pressure pediatric what is the blood pressure cut off so there is something for 95th centile these there are centiles are there but you need to know the hypotension cut off someone your hypo for you all then oya ge blood pressure adu kiyanne kiyata wada adu inanda lavan ferera oya ge blood pressure ekak oya doctor oya gila balana oya ge pressure ekak adu kiyala denaganne kohomada siya ta wada adu siya ta ye oya ta anupa hati bot oya de merende yan man merena man merende yan man merende yan kiyala hita ganna ne what i can do 
What is the cut of uh, uh, Lien again? Mirash? Uh, it's 90 by it's 60. Phoenix? Yeah, guys, your cutoff is 90 by 60. Yeah, that's like a 90 by 60. So after 10 years, this is the cutoff. Up to 10, like after 10 years, this is the cutoff, 90 by 60. But before 10 years, it's not like that. So you don't need to get panic unnecessarily. So keep this in your mind, this is important in your TA. So that is 70 plus age into two. 70 plus age into two. I thought the infant can have 70. Five years now? If it is five years? If it is five years, it's totally cut off. Eh? Five years? Yeah. Thanks, Patrick. I know, guys, most of you all have, don't have this match gene. That's why you all did bio. Right? Okay. So, guys, 70 plus 18 to 2 means. So, that is 8. Got it? So, you, if you know those, that, then you will be able to work out and get the correct answer in your SBS, right? So you need to resist it, resist it, resist it. Good. So then, of course, you need to insert an IV cannula and draw the blood for the investigations. You need to take for the full blood count. So you can have no, you will know whether it is viral or bacterial. So then you can take a CRP. So the CRP usually get high in bacteria, but some encephalitis, some viruses, again, they can have high CRPs that is possible, right? So influenza, right, sometimes uh, even HSP, sometimes the uh, CRP also can be high, but if it is very high, or something like 200, 300, more towards bacteria. Then the serum electrolytes and CBS. Why we are doing CBS and serum electrolytes? Guys, as I mentioned previously, most of children, they can have drowsiness or they can present with fever and convulsion. So as I mentioned, so it can be just a viral fever with an hypoglycemia, viral fever with an electrolyte imbalances. So you need to have an idea regarding the CBS and the electrolyte levels, whether the seizure or the drowsiness is due to some other secondary cause. Got it? So you need to have an idea. At the same time, guys, so serum electrolyte is important to have an idea regarding the complication of the NS infection. I will come to that later. Right? So that is important. So those are the main investigations which you need to do in addition to blood culture, blood culture, blood culture. Blood culture is the most, most, most important investigation which you need. Blood can you like them? Can you like them? Clean color, clean color, clean color. Can you like them? Can you like them? Blood ticker got the culture got the 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 So then, guys, but there are some other investigations out there which we might do depending on the clinical history and depending on the like uh, suspicion. So if you are thinking about TB, what blood investigations initial? For example, my child had a positive contact history of TB. Child had fever for two weeks, and now he's developing headache and fever and mild neck stiffness. And also there's a cranial nerve palsy. So you are thinking about TB. So then guys, what? You can do a ESR, ESR, ESR. So ESR is important to have an, like the ESR is very high compared to CRP. So ERP, ESR is significant here. We need to think about TB as well. But again, the partially treated bacterial meningitis still can have the same picture. So sometimes if you are not so sure about whether it is viral or bacterial, sometimes child must have treated with antibiotic. Now the CRP is not that high. Counts has been almost normal. If you are not so sure about that, you can do a blood picture, blood picture, blood picture, because these changes will be there for some time. So you might see toxic granular changes, maybe atypical lymphocytosis or lymphocytosis the prominent lymphocytes that will support whether whether child had a reactive lymphocyte the viral infection or whether child had a bacterial or so more important sometimes if you are thinking in encephalitis you can send viral studies for serology if you are thinking in encephalitis you can do a EEG where you might see slowing of frontal as well as temporal region and sometimes you can do a CT or MRI to find out the focal lesions in right, uh, if you are suspecting that encephalitis or abscess formation, right, good. So here the important message is, guys, but, so those are the important investigations which you need to do. So count, CRP, electrolytes, and CBS, plus or minus, rest of the investigation. Got it? Good. So here the important message is, guys, but, 
So that is, there was no change up to now. But now, guys, there isn't some important change is there, but again, it's a clinical judgment. Guideline is a guideline, right? It's like this, guys. Now, may, may, this is something very important. When it comes to the in situ, which is more important, the guideline on elsons or practical management? So the guidelines are elsons, yes. When it comes to the single best response, what is more important? Guideline. Uh, uh, is uh, on your sense the practical management? It's practical management. Guideline is a guide. Gu Master, this is very important, guys. You, as the competent doctor, you need to know, for example, I know everything about all the guidelines. Everything. I'm a guideline, I'm a technology, I'm a commander, everything. What is there and what is the difference? When it comes to the executive, there are some changes are there. So you apply or like after knowing everything, right? So you put the most appropriate management that to that particular child. So every time the management should be tailor made. It is not the guideline. Okay. When it comes to the practical so guideline is a guide. Tamaharo don't try to render again in one, it's a guide. Leda again, leda, it's individual. Keep that in your mind. For example, child comes with a fever, high grade fever, and child was very drowsy throughout, child was very ill in between fever, and high grade fever spikes are going. Day four, child developing a conversion and presenting to the ward uh, with. Uh, uh, status epilepsy. Conversion is going for more than half an hour. So, you search this APLS Australian guideline. Tiana, Palenica, Abwa, Midazalamica, Dun. Devanica, Midazalamica, Dun. Pedavasa, Gina Babita, Nari, Mokakarika, Dun. Eka, Dun. So, why this child development conversion? Because of this likely possible CNS infection. So even though you, you are giving this middle salam, at the same time, once you when you are taking blood for the investigation, you take a blood for an culture also, and you immediately you give an antibiotic, so broad spectrum antibiotic. How is it? If a child comes with an this uh, con persistent uh, this uh, conversion, but you are, when you are exam when you check the blood pressure in a status epileptic child, now the blood pressure is very high. 190 by 100, right? Now the thing is, sometimes your your colleague or your consultant or someone might say, uh, make a book of pressure again. If it takes a cut, now where do you know? If it takes a cut, now where do you know? If it takes a cut, the pressure where do you know? So then, of course, you need to go with the history and examination hand in hand. You need to look at the periorbital region. You can ask for the reduced urine output uh, during the last 24 hours and whether there is an Immaturia or dark color urine was there. You can insert and catheter quickly and assess the this color of the urine. Then, of course, you can start an anti IV anti -hypertens. So that the otherwise this, these things are resistant for these emergency medications. So guideline is a guide. Right? Okay. So right. So but SBS point of view and the practical fact because SBS is about practical management. Right? So you need to give the most appropriate management for that particular child. Right? Got it? So keep that in your mind. So it's very important. So good. So then even though guidelines has changed, the question to question it will differ. So use that knowledge. When we are doing some questions, you will understand very clearly, right? So you need to take the blood culture. So now your decision is whether you are going to give up antibiotic or not. Whether you are going to give LP or antibiotic. So previously it was you need to start antibiotics immediately. Then 
next day or once the child is a little bit stable you do the lamb function lamb function that cost the previous guys but now of course guys what so the here the important message is the lumbar puncture the early lumbar puncture the advantage is it will confirm as well as exclude the most of these cns cases right and the problem is guys what when you give antibiotics these csf reports will get sterile very quickly so the cultures will get negative and the full report also you might not see any organism so streptococcus infection completely get sterile Four hours after the antibiotic, meningococcus even one, right? So that is there. So that's why they now they are encouraging the do the lumbar lumbar puncture early as possible, early as possible. So, but try to start the antibiotics within one hour, right? Start because child can die due to any complication, right? So start the antibiotics within one hour, but. try to do the lumbar puncture early as possible right good so guys so here the important message is your third step should be ideally the lumbar puncture lumbar puncture lumbar puncture then the fourth step is the specific medication which is iv antibiotics iv dexamethasone plus or minus a cycle got it But the here the important message is, guys. Are, so when you are doing the lumbar puncture, before doing the lumbar puncture, you need to have an idea about like whether there is a contraindications are there. If contraindications are there, so then of course immediately you start antibiotic. In the absence of absolute, definitely as well as relative contraindications, you can go ahead with the lumbar puncture, and uh, then of course it will be okay. Right. Then, for example, child is coming with a fever and a headache. So do not you look at them. Right. Or maybe child had a fit uh, yesterday night. Now, today, by the way, the lamia will look at them. I am not saying. So there is an extiness also there. A child is fever, headache, and extiness, but child is not unstable. That is in the cold. At any point, they can have septicemia and shock. Right. But like. If you can arrange the lumbar puncture very quickly, tagga la gatta and the demma minima kela yathiye ke kera. That is what they recommend now. Sorry, I clear. Tagga la consent te gatta me. Practically there are issues are there. Amma ek apar hai molete se bija kapi chake kerna hai, kerna ek apar gatta hai, right? So but you need to do that. Okay, good. So the, here, the important thing is you need to know about the contraindications for the lumbar puncture. So there are absolute contraindications and the relative contraindications are there. So what are the absolute contraindications? So the guys, so the features, features, features of race ICP. If they have features of race ICP, that's the absolute contraindications. Mainly reduction in GCS. If the GCS less than thirteen, child is very unstable. So then, of course, you know. When you think you GCS picture are doing, then you know there is a significant interrace ICP is there. So when when you put do the LP and when you take the CSS, suddenly the brain can turn in. So you don't do right lumbar puncture. As well as if they have papillary edema, as well as they have Cushing's reflex. So papillary edema, Cushing's reflex. So you will notice when they have significant race ICP, race ICP, race ICP. Right? Got it? So that's an absolute contraindication. So you can start treatment. You can go for a CT or MRI. Once the acute condition is settled, literally you can do the lumbar puncture, right? So then, of course, guys, the second contraindication is especially if they have coagulopathy, especially if they have low platelets, low platelets, low platelets. Practical problem is these guideline people haven't forgotten. So how how do we know whether child have low platelets? We don't know. Why we haven't take like 
blood dek dah. Tapi kami report tak ni. Now we are doing an urgent lama function. We don't know. Sometimes when they have sepsis, the bone marrow gets suppressed and they can have low platelets. That is very common feature in CNS infection. Right? There is a practical problem there. They are right. Guideline make a guideline here. Right? But uh, we are not aware about the platelet. Come report again the platelet as well. Uh, just in case if they develop a hematoma in the spinal cord, right? So then child lower limbs get lower limbs get paralyzed, right? Okay. So first of all, we need to like minimize the iatrogenic uh, these problems things. Look. So third one, guys, was skin sepsis in the local site lumbar puncture area. Picture na ina thena. L3, L1, L4 region, right? So, this is a skin sepsis even. Because it will misinterpret the report as well as it can introduce the infections to the brain. Okay? So, those are the absolute contraindications. There are relative contraindications are there. Again, guys, even though they have mentioned relative, I don't know, like, those are again very dangerous, right? So when you become doctors, please be careful. So they I have mentioned ABC is unstable. If the ABC is unstable, give the antibiotics and do, like don't wait. Like don't do the lumbar punch immediately. If the ABC is unstable, you resuscitate and you give the antibiotic. You can later on do the lumbar punch. Right? They have meant put it as under relative contraindication. Right? Theoretically. Very up. Right? So the problem is, guys, what ABC, if the patient is ABC unstable, now how are you going to sedate the children? Child can be very irritable. You need to sedate it. If the child, if you are going to sedate, how are you going to sedate? So ketamine is one important drug, but some hospitals they it is contra, it's not given. They have prohibited because some children has died following ketamine. So then you need to go for an midazolam or something. Again, it will suppress the respiration, right? The chlorella also like right so the ketamine again car cardiac problem these hypertension and everything is there so like those are toxic medication anesthetic these like sedating medications so if the abc is unstable so even though we have mentioned relative contraindications theoretically don't do it then the next one is guys what meningococcal rash so if they have meningococcal rash they can at any point they can have sepsis and septic shock, right? So careful, right? Child can die in the next hour. Report take a and the kila hit again and again. If the child development seizure, if it is focal or if it is very acute within 30 minutes, hit take a will allude to take a or if they have focal neurological signs, again, it's also a feature of a ASI CP, right? So if they have paralysis of the neural palsy. So ABC unstable, meningeal, meningococcal rash, or seizure within 30 minutes of focal seizure. Got it? So those are the contraindications. So in the absence of contraindications, you can go ahead with the lumbar puncture. If, they, if there are any presence of these contraindications, take the blood culture and give the antibiotic, antibiotic, antibiotic first. Got it? Good. Right. So, hope you all are very clear. Right. So, quickly. Now, the lumbar puncture. You need to have a rough idea regarding lumbar puncture. So, lumbar puncture we have taught previously also. So, you need to take several reports. So, the one thing, the first one is what? So, the full report, proteins and uh, sugar culture and you can take some extra samples. So the, here the important message is, guys, right? So uh, give me a second. Right. So the full report. What are things you are going to look at the, in the full report? So full report, you are going to specifically look into uh, uh, the macroscopic appearance, right? Well, blood make it in the coma, whether it is turbid, whether it is high pressure or low pressure, whether it is turbid, blood stain, or whether it is clear. So that is the macroscopic appearance, right? So some traumatic blood then not full or maybe some conditions you might see red blood cell. And as well as sometimes it can be turbid in right uh, 
especially in bacterial meningitis, very yellowish or the xanthochromic in TB, and sometimes it like it will be very clear in viral. So the macroscopic appearance, you can have an idea. So then, of course, guys, what? So you when the full report also the these lab people they will mention about the microscopic appearance. Then you need to know about the cell count. So they will in the report they will mention whether the new all lymphocytes are more prominent. So they will mention polymorphs are this much. So polymorphs, lymphocytes, and red cells. So report what is the exact uh, whether it is bacterial or viral. So the other important thing is, guys, what well, they will send the result like organisms or the microscopic appearance, the and the likely organism. For whom are the microscopic organisms that in the gram stain? So that is the one reason they have like suggested doing early lumbar puncture before antibiotics because you will be able to see organisms nowadays if you uh, do early lumbar puncture and you will be able to identify the exact organism most of the time, right? So even before the culture. So that is the importance of knowing the organism. At the same time, guys, uh, the important thing is you need to have an idea regarding the protein. You need to look at the proteins. And the sugar, why it is, those are important? Because especially if the child has been treated antibiotics prior to lumbar puncture from the GP or in the ward setup, the full report can get altered. But the, to change the sugar levels as protein levels, it, gets, it takes some time. So by looking at that, you can still interpret. So the, finally, the cultures, again, it takes time to, time to get the report. So that is important. And you can say take some extra samples, especially for the bacterial and PCR for bacterial antigen. So those are the samples, five samples which you take during your lumbar function. Good. So guys, here the important thing is you need to know about the normal values uh, before interpreting. So here the important thing is guys, what well, there are some errors are there in, the, the, in this note which you need to change. Now of course these values has been little bit changed. So we are mainly talking about older children. So older children, guys, but so past tense. Is there a lamai ekatib but abnormal kila gatte? Now it is older children, but neonates of course up to five is normal. So polymorphs, neonates up to five is normal. The all the bigger, all the children up to the lymphocytes. All the children, guys, those days it was 10, now it is 5. But neonates, it is up to 10. Proteins, no change, right? So 45 is the upper cutoff in older children. Neonates is 120. The sugar levels, of course, uh, older children, it is uh, less than 50. And neonates, uh, less than 60%, right? Normal, more than 75, no, but like we are thinking about an organism when it is below 50%, right? So here the important message is that sometimes it might ask in your NCP. Viral meningitis. CSF sugar is always normal. True or false? Can someone say? Can you all say? Viral meningitis, CSF sugar is. So, here the thing is, guys, that is false, right? So, the reason is, guys, the one important meningitis or even encephalitis also it can cause the mumps. Mumps is very important organism which can cause low sugar, right? Can consume sometimes even rarely HSP. So there are some important factors there, I'm going to tell, but it is not so important in your 
friction point, question point of view, but for your practical point of view, this is important. Okay, if it's all about the other, the only thing I can figure out here. So sometimes, guys, when you do the lambda function, sometimes we give you two H O, some other. They know how to try it, and nowadays, of course, like, maybe not anything. H O, like, what am I doing? Right, lambda function, everything. So initially, like, they make some mistakes. Now they are very confident. So when they like, like, scale the lambda function, they make mistakes. So sometimes it can get traumatized. So the blood also can, like, it can receive, it can stain with blood. So when they send the report, say they sometimes say. Red cells are they are like two thousand five. Red cells are they are five. Now you are not, you don't know it is whether you have to make it as abnormal or normal. Like red cells, you put me next time. Of course, it is abnormal. Like up to two, no, it is normal. Now five is abnormal. But when there are red cells five hundred five two thousand five hundred are they are you are not so sure, right? Because in, The poor red blood cells are sick. Blood cells are sick. For more to come, you know what? So you need to balance it. So here the important thing is, guys, what? Each 500 red cells will have one heart. One cell take it. So now you can see the dark one cell, isn't it? They can have five blood cells. Up to five is normal. Right, so how much two in a can normal? So overall, up to seven is normal. If it is two thousand five hundred red cells are there, so this is this is will be a normal. Got it? So that is a practical point up here, but we will not ask any questions. But the protein and sugar, there won't be any much difference. I am not going to discuss otherwise. We will like some. I mean, da ha ke to mangal jaise hamper disillu the change jaake na, so there won't be any much difference, right? So we don't discuss much. Good. So I clear up to now. Good. So guys, good. So now of course, guys, now you need to learn about how to interpret the lambda function. Let's see how to interpret the lambda function. So that is extremely important. So how are you going to interpret the lambda function? So first of all, guys, as I mentioned, you need to know uh, the macroscopic appearance. Then, guys, you need to know what is the uh, type of cell. Then you need to know about. Uh, you need to have an idea regarding the proteins as well as the sugar. Right, so I'll take a then the protein and sugar. Now it is very easy. Now, first one is guys. What? So you need to know about bacterial, bacterial, bacterial media. So bacterial media. So bacterial meningitis is usually the macroscopic appearance. Usually, it will be curvy. Protein may be in, so it will be curvy. So the part of that is, you know, it's not very clear. Nika, so the part of mixer now. Sometimes can be clear, right? So the cells, what would be more prominent? But the prominent thing is polymorph, polymorph, polymorph. So the nucleus will be prominent. The proteins. Ah, protein will be very high, very high, very high, right? It will be more than one hundred ten. Sugar will be what? It will be very low, very low, very low. So it will be less than fifty. Clear there? So that is common sense. Sugar I am doing it, so the bacteria will consume for their cellular metabolism. So we are doing it. Why the proteins get high? So the bacteria will cause significant inflammation. So the, with the inflammatory process, a lot of proteins will be there in CSS. That is the reason. But now the viral, viral meningitis. So the color will be what? I mean, I'm put inflammation here. So viral meningitis is so mild inflammation in the meninges. So it will be clear. But the cells will be there. What is the cell? What type of cells you will notice? The lymphocytes, lymphocytes. The protein. I mean. So it will be like a mild inflammation. So it will be normal, normal manner. Normal, eh? Normal manner. Then the surgery. So sugar. Sugar, how much? Guys, again, it will be normal, normal, normal because viruses will not consume sugar, right? If there are like one, two, three exceptions, like that, maybe mountain. Yeah. Which is usually is not that. 
So clear? Good. So then when it comes to a TV, TV, TV. Guys, the information part is so significant. So because of that, what will you notice? So it will be extremely turbid, right? Sometimes you might notice very yellowish. So you call it as anthropon or fogular. Like a like it. You will see like a web. Sometimes it can be turbid, anthropic or fogulum. That will you notice as a TV. Then the cell counts. So you, they will have lymphocytes and neutrophils both because. It is not a typical bacteria, like it's a bacteria, but it's a different type of bacteria, right? It's cause a delayed type of hypersensitive reaction and the lymphocytes also will get activated. They will have both lymphocytes and neutrophils. But the important thing is lymphocytes are more prominent than the... Here the important thing is are more Proteins will be extremely, extremely, extremely high. So bacteria like 170, 160, something like TB, 300, 400, uh, right? So I recently had a child. It was 1,200 proteins, right? Very high. Okay. A month that very maker, but usually like 300, 400, you are so the sugar levels again it will be low, but not so low as bacteria, right? So it can be low, low or close to normal, low, low margin. So here the important by again TB will consume the sugar. Good. Now we to know cartel berry, cartel puna. These are very common things, but there are few difficult ones are there which I'm going to discuss. The next important one is, guys, are the partially treated, partially treated, partially treated bacterial meningitis, bacterial meningitis, bacterial This is a trivial part. So in the partially treated bacterial meningitis, macroscopic appearance will be what? Guys, so it depends on the duration of the treatment. So how long they have been treated in the past? So whether they have like treated for only for one day of oral antibiotics, or whether they have given several doses of antibiotics, oral or IV, like it depends on the picture. So if you if they have given only few doses, you will see a mixed picture. Some viral bacteria mix But if they have given several doses of antibiotics, what will you notice? So you will notice they will be a what? The almost completely viral, viral, viral picture, right? So keep that in your mind. So the macroscopic usually it will be clear. Cell counts usually the lymphocytes only, or lymphocytes will be more prominent than the neutrophils. Yeah, and sometimes you might think it is a viral theory because you don't treat with antibiotics, but that is partially treated. Okay, but the protein will be still high most of the time. Oh, but if you if they have given a few like significant dose of number of doses, still it can be normal. Sugar will be usually low, but still it can be normal if they have given several doses of antibiotics. Only in the normalized when the this full report, then the sugars, then the protein. Now tell me. Now the cultures also will be negative usually. Now watch. Now, if you are thinking about partially treated bacterial meningitis, what extra? What is the? What are you going to do with the extra sample? That would be the best investigation. Confirm the diagnosis. Up. Very good, Patrick. Very good. Very good. Very good. Guys, keep this in your mind. That is PCR for bacterial antigen. So in Sri Lanka, most of the hospitals they are doing. They are checking for pneumococcal hip and the Neisseria meningitis. So you will be able to detect the organism, right? So even in a bacterial meningitis, still you can send, right? Your bacteria. So you will be able to detect the organism. You can take the antibiotic as well. Got it? Good. I'll play up to now. Great. So easy. The fourth difficult, fifth difficult part. Encephalitis. 
so encephalitis is usually occurs following what viral 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 common hsv viral so macroscopically it will be clear but with the rays icp it will be with the high pressure which gal with the gamma which go 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 gal right so then cell count what it is viral so usually the lymphocyte 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 will be protein it will be normal virus sugar it will be normal now viral meningitis and encephalitis or the lambda function report is almost similar so how are you going to differentiate can you differentiate with the lambda function report is uh, anjana So there can be all these things in anything like this. Yeah, guys, this is extremely important. This is extremely important. We'll put in your these uh, facts will be there in your SPA questions, guys. The encephalitis, 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 common organism is but the HSV, HSV usually cause hemorrhagic encephalitis. Man, ki hamele hatte the ni hemorrhage, it will bleed. Asti wale ka kaoti, it will hemorrhage, bleed karna. So here also inside there will be a bleeding, hemorrhagic encephalitis. So when they have hemorrhagic encephalitis, so the CSF, entire CSF will get blood stain. And when you do it, you when you do the lambda puncture, you will see red blood cells, red blood cells, red blood cells. So that is very classic in what RBC, RBC, RBC will be there in encephalitis. Again, you can send the PCR for viral studies as well if you want to confirm. Sorry. So here the important thing is now you might think a traumatic type of pain in the lumbar band check. Like, so we need to punch you. How are you going to differentiate, guys? The traumatic type. So initially it will be significantly stained, but when you are taking for the next and next and next samples, it will become almost normal. So the stain, like color of this, like uh, staining, stain of the CSF will gradually diminish, but the encephalitis. the entire csf has been stained for some time so it will be uniform 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 hama sample like em kiyana red cell amount ga it will be equal got it good so to prevent traumatic tap practically what are you going to do traumatic tap red cells may occur ga so you initially take the report for the sugar then the protein then you take for the this uh, culture and finally culture culture sugar protein and find you are taking for the food at the antim with the red cell stain ekak hondata mawada vela kara got it so but it will not be there in in people like clear good so then i wardinawa the can you interpret a lumbar puncture report easily so when you now this is very beneficial guys when you go to an hospital also by looking at lp lp report you can see ha yeah we have the internet internet so here the one important message is there partially to define it as a partially treated bacterial meningitis i told you they can have mixed picture they can have uh uh is viral like picture so partially treated bacterial meningitis what tells you need to ask in the history ඒක අනිවාර්ය එක තිබ්බොත් එච්චර ඇති තිබ්බේ නැත්නම් ඉතින් ලේබල් ඉට ඇස් පාස් ටු ට්‍රීට් බැක් ටු මේ කෙල් බට් ෂුඩ් බී දෙයා ඉන් ද හිස්ටරි ඒක තියෙනවා නේ යා ගයිස් බට් චයිල්ඩ් ෂුඩ් හැස් බීන් ට්‍රීටඩ් විත් ඇන්ටිබයෝටික්ස් ඇන්ටිබයෝටික්ස් ඇන්ටිබයෝටික් ඇන්ටිබයෝටික් නැත් ගහන්න නැතුව ට්‍රීට් කරලා නැහැ කියන්න බෑ නෑ අම්මගෙන් අහන කලින් ඇන්ටිබයෝටික් ගත්තද නෑ ඉස්පිරි දාලා ඇන්ටිබයෝටික් දුන්නත් ලම්බ පංචකට කලින් නෑ then you can't tell label it as partial treated right so in your exams questions also they should definitely mention child has been treated with antibiotic then only you can label this as a partial treated bacterial meningitis if you know the mixed picture of something like close to viral right so that is that should be there clear i clear up to now great so that's all about the lumbar puncture interpretation 
Good. So, hope you had a very clear idea. Few things I'm going to just ask you. Random, random questions. So, uh, Saji, we deal wrong. So, can you tell me, dear, if a child comes with a fever and a conversion, no meningeal irritation features are there, you're clinically suspecting a complex febrile conversion. Yeah, child development, two convulsions within 24 hours. So, if you are clinically suspecting complex febrile conversion, what do you see? In a CSF report. Yes, you wrong it. I can't hear you, dear. Your volume is. Good. Yes, Yes, I can't hear you, dear. Uh, Rashini? Rashini Jayakoti, yes. What do you think? Can you? Yeah. So, can you see? Can you see? Now, child had a febrile conversion, complex febrile conversion, two conversions within 24 hours. Now you were uh, you are like um, Sultan wanted to arrange a lumbar puncture. If it is a febrile conversion, what will you see in the lumbar puncture report? Simple. Practically, this could be the alloy. Okay, then one is current. Yes. I can't hear you. Your volume is. Uh, can you increase your volume? Uh, so can you hear now? Yeah, of course I can. Uh, proteins, sugar. Yeah, you are looking at the what are what are changes you will notice in the child with a febrile conversion. No idea. Shanali Kulatunga? Don't blame him. Tell something. This is very important and practically you are doing. Kanali? You can make mistakes, doesn't matter. Yes, Shanali, unmute and say something. Yes. Sorry? Sorry? RB. Uh-huh. Pasindu? Did you notice? The the clinical picture of encephalitis because uh seizures are a sign of increased intracranial pressure and encephalitis predominantly shows uh, increased ICP signs. Anjana? It's normal. Why? Ah. Right. The febrile conversion is febrile conversion. There's no infections in the brain, right? So, if you can make a hammer down, febrile conversion, can you make a hammer down? Lame and not a man at a duster and not a man? Nah. I'm going to buy in Kadagin. What is the main problem or complete problem of febrile conversion? The maternal anxiety. So the majority are developing just following a viral fever. Just there is a hypersensitivity for these cytokines. That's all about the fever or the cytokines which release from these organisms. That's all. So you don't need there is no brain damage or nothing. Nothing's gonna happen. So there is no cellular infiltration. So even if you do a lumbar puncture, the lumbar puncture report will be completely normal. No lymphocytes, no neutrophils, nothing, nothing, nothing. So that is again important, right? So those are very practical things, <laughs> right? Still, they haven't asked those questions in your papers, any of those papers, but they will. But it is very common and practical and very easy thing. But majority were not aware. So the answers 
students have sent and everything, right? Very few only knew. So here that is important, right? I'm just asking difficult ones. So Patu, now tell me Patu. Mangi me amaru evahan ne tikapu. Yaar mang no tela thi ne telegram ne ke haari to uttar dene. Yaar mang lamang kinte me evahan ne tikapu. Am I right? So now tell me. Uh, if if a child had not related to this just i am asking they might ask in your patients right child with an gbs gillen basu but for i notice uh, you will see high protein and like normal uh, cells so it's going to be cellular protein dissociation cellular protein dissociation excellent 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 mm, okay all right subarachnoid hemorrhage Santa Cromia can be seen. You can see RBCs, but also Santa Cromias. Excellent, Pato. Excellent. You are still in third year, fourth year, fourth year. Yeah, finally, yeah. Right, which year? Uh, I'm done. I'm <laughs> done with. Uh, oh, yeah. Kidding. You're not ready for this time exam, no? Planning to. Let's see. I haven't not put many. my applications yet. I'm planning to. I'm planning to. Thank you, Pato. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 So here, yeah, very good. So here, the important message is, guys, that so. You need to know about those things. So in your exam questions, they might ask, right? S H U E P L ask in your medicine paper, right? Not in PEDS. So you need to have an idea about those things. Okay, good. So that's all about lumbar puncture interpretation. So then, of course, guys, one, yeah, we need to go for the treatment, treatment, treatment. So before that, I will give you five minutes break, right? So uh, LP microscopic appearance, you need to have an idea, which will ask in your MCQs. But before that, I will give you five minutes break. So join me in five minutes, right? So we'll have a party and come.
Right, guys. Uh, can you please switch on your cameras? Click, 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 click. Right. We need to do some questions also. So quickly switch on your cameras. Right. So hope you all are fresh now. Right. Hope I want you all to concentrate. Please quickly switch on your cameras. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Randima, Ovini. Yes. Fonseca. How the inne? Who's inne? So you need to put your correct name. iPhone. Need to put your real name. iPhone is nothing to be proud. So she is doing all oh, these taking selfies and TikToks and everything. So, what is going on? I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't know Right, guys. So, okay, good. So, here. Important message is guys, what? So lumbar puncture appearance, LP appearance. So LP appearance guys, so sometimes it can be gram positive. Gram positive means what? So when you stand, you will see it in, in blue. Very simple. So otherwise the gram or microscope and balladi pain a day, right? So then gram negative, then you will see in pink, right? So then of course, there's something called cocci and bacilli. Cocci means that it's like around circular. Bacilli is it's like a rod, spherical, spherical. I mean, like the elongated thing, right? So like a rod. So that is bacilli. So very easy, right? So you will see different patterns. Sometimes it might ask in your MCQs, uh, right? Because nowadays we are since we are uh, like. Uh, since we are giving antibiotics after taking lumbar punctures, you will see these differences, these uh, organisms, and you will be able to tell the exact organism, right? Okay, now tell me. So, if you see like this, so this is diplococci. So, diplococci, you usually you will see in the commonest picture, you will see, right? So, that is. What? That is what? So, that is Diplococci, Streptococcus, Pneumonia, Streptococcus, Pneumonia, Streptococcus, Pneumonia, right? So, sometimes you might see these cocci in chains, right? So, that is cocci in chains, you will see GBS, group B, and Streptococci, right? So, sometimes you might see gram positive rods or the gram positive bacilli. So that is, you will see Listeria, 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 Monocytogen. So you must have learned these things in your microbiology also, right? Okay, good, easy. Listeria, Monocytogen. So then, gram negative, gram negative, gram negative. So that's a part of the gay documents. Some students have thought that is stickers, that is not stickers, that is thinking that is meaning to focus, right? Okay. So that is what bam negative. So you will see in many to focus on I see there are many chinese. So sometimes you might see coco bacilli. What is coco bacilli? So you get cocci bacilli, bacilli bacilli. So it like looks like and like a, sometimes like a circular shape. Sometimes it looks like a rod. Dignity. It's not like a rod though. It's not like a circular. So that is coco bacilli, right? Small, small. These are usually small, but you can't exactly say it is cocci or bacilli. It's a mixed piece. So you will classically see. Deep, 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 hemophilic influenza type B. Sometimes you will see gram negative bacilli. So that is, you will classically see E. coli, E. coli, E. coli. Sorry? 
So if you know those things, you will be able to interpret. Right? Good. Ah, another important thing. Sometimes you might see a ramp of the queue like a cluster, like a pair of grapes, like a grape, like grapes. Grape ni diwal lah. What? That is the commonest thing, streptococcus pneumonia, which you will see. Then, cocaine chains, that is GBS, neonate, it is important. Bacilli, for positive bacilli, that is listeria, important in neonate, so pass meconium prematurely. Clear this one, Nicerea meningitis, mortality is very high, adult is important. Again, upper bacilli, important, lot of morbidity here in the family. E. coli, gram negative rods, you will see in neonates, again important. This one, again, you will see uh, children with BP, shunt, and everything. What do you see? What do you see? Huh? Staph, 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 right? Staph. So, staph aureus or staph epididymis. So, you will see this pattern. Picture, right? So that is again yes important. Good. So that is what you need to know, right? So then specific treatment. So how are you going to treat these children? So specific treatment. Right. So RV antibiotics. So RV antibiotics, specific treatment. There are three, three important things are there. First one is IV antibiotics, IV antibiotics, IV antibiotics. So what is the IV antibiotic you are going to prescribe? What is the drug of choice? That is third generation cephalosporin, third generation cephalosporin, third generation cephalosporin. You are given empirical. You don't have a report. So the empirical antibiotic, the best option is third generation cephalosporin, either IV cephotaxime or IV ceftriaxone, right? Cephotaxime or ceftriaxone, cephotaxime or ceftriaxone. So you can give, right? So that is the drug of choice, drug of choice, drug of choice. But here the important message is you are given, cephotaxime is the what is which we frequently use in the hospital setup. You are given anti-meningitic dose, anti-meningitic, anti-meningitic. That is, what is the difference? You are given six hourly, 50 milligram per kg, six hourly. Otherwise, you are given other conditions, 8 hourly, sometimes 30 milligram per kg, 8 hourly. So here you are giving 50 milligram per kg, 6 hourly. You don't need to buy hard the, the dose, but know that is the anti-meningitic dose, right? So that is very important. So then, guys, what? That is IV antibiotics. But what is the importance? Like, keftriaxone also important. So there are clinically important three things are there. Keftriaxone, you can't give in units who have jaundice, right? So especially who have jaundice because it can interfere the bilirubin metabolism. So you don't give. The other important thing is nowadays people are very scared of giving keftriaxone because one child you must have heard, no? Uh, following keftriaxone, there's a reaction and child died. Now all are sending the simple meningitis transfer into LRH. They are very scared of giving antibiotics, right? So to manage these reactions, my God, right? So uh, the keftriaxone, right? So that is the problem. So the other thing, what is the advantage of keftriaxone? Sometimes, like if the child is having coming with a severe septic shock, there is a difficult cannulation. So then, of course, you can give intramuscularly, right? So keftriaxone, you can give intramuscularly even, right? So in the absence of cannula, if the child is going into a septic shock, give IEM keftriaxone, that is the advantage, right? So commonly, we, what we frequently prescribe is kefotaxime, kefotaxime, kefotaxime. Are you clear? Good. But if you know the culture report or if you are uh, like clinically suspecting something, you can add or you can uh, give that specific antibiotic, right? So kef on addition to kefotaxime, you can add this one. So special situation. So meningococcus. If you notice a meningococcal rash, so what is the drug of choice? What is the drug of choice? For meningococcus. My God. How they 
ඉනිංගු කොක ගියාලුවයි ඔයා ගියාලුවයි yeah yeah that is gona cocker so so what is the dog of choice for gona cocker ah oh, very good ekata uttara wala dena that is very silly right ekata dana ah this is also same right okay so penicillin 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 is the drug of choice right so ekala gona cocker pirimila wenta haduna thangila unda baha and it give iv gangrene then i think they would be on develop much symptoms right so they will be carriers and then again you know much symptoms will be less yes they will be symptomatic so they need to take iv treatment right so there you go so here the meningococcal also the drug of choice is penicillin 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 so listeria monocytogen ampicillin staph infections Yes, if you the child with an VEP shot, you can add vancomycin, right? Vancomycin or fluoxetine. Vancomycin would be a better option. Right. So the treatment duration, guys. Usually meningitis, we usually prescribe fourteen days of antibiotic. That is the generally what we do. Uh, some ten to fourteen days. Usually better to prescribe fourteen days. So. but there are special situations are there so neonates how much do we prescribe commonly how long how long do we prescribe 21 days right so what is the reason because the commonest organism is e coli e coli e coli so if you couldn't isolate the organism so you need to think whether there is a, the possibility of having a e coli meningitis so the e coli is very difficult to kill right so that's why you need to give 21 days listeria very difficult e coli very difficult you need to treat with 21 days a streptococcus aureus very easy to treat so 10 14 days would be more than you know but the other organism hib and the meningococcus so it is easy right you can easily eliminate so hib actually even 10 days would be enough meningococcus even 7 days would be enough but in general We do is in general, generally we treat with 14 days of antibiotics, right? Good. So have a rough idea about that. The duration we don't ask much in your questions, right? Chera, then somebody if you ask from a consultant, majority most of the will not aware. If my my if I give it to them, some are aware then, but they are well aware. What is the drug of choice for the meningococcus? The drug of choice for this type, right? That they are that is of course well aware, right? And uh, even the, right so good so guys now sometimes some children are they are very difficult to differentiate they will have meningeal irritation features as well as raised icp features so if you have a slightest degree of suspicion of raised icp meningitis is very common of course you are definitely given iv antibiotics even for the viral encephalitis is there but encephalitis is less common comparatively but the problem is if you have slightest degree of suspicion especially if the altered behavior or this gcs is dropping you need to add iv 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 antiviral that is iv acyclovir iv acyclovir iv acyclovir but only evidence of these viral etiologies like raised icp or behavioral changes got it So then, the other important medication is, guys, what the dexamethasone, dexamethasone, dexamethasone. The chain. This is the one important area where the guidelines has changed, right? These facts has changed, been changed. The IV dexamethasone, why we are giving? Because, guys, you know, they these children like they can have sepsis and die, but the most of the time, they the nerve cells as well as these uh, the hearing impairment damage to the brain cells as well as the inflammation mainly of course like for the these morbid things mainly happens due to the inflammation 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 pana hen nathi wenne brain ekak damage enne lamaya cp had enne pulwang inflammation not it not the infection itself so you need to suppress the inflammation right so when you give the antibiotic sometimes it might release more cytokines when uh, it destroy the these bacterial organisms so bolu athle cytokine 
karaki karaki kira so it might worsen the condition so that's why the dexamethasone is helpful when you give dexamethasone it suppresses the inflammation and it will uh, settle the condition but there is several arguments sir there why because when you give dexamethasone sometimes it will reduce the antibiotic penetration and organism can get kakarenawa kiyena mateya tibba so that was their initiative that's why we were very cautious when you are giving prescribing dexamethasone in children but then of course sometimes like uh, these uh, in some like at lrh university unit that is the professorial unit they are not giving dexamethasone why the reason is some studies have shown that the during that stress infection the cortisol levels will be very any uh, anyway high that will enough to suppress this inflammation and everything so there were some indian studies were there so they were considered in that and they were not giving dexamethasone at all right for any any children any child right so but now of course the guidelines has ch- been changed so they have considered the risk benefit balance about the morbidity and the mortality because like even though we say the hemophilus influenza is the highest like those days i i used to say if you are suspecting hip you need to give but even though like the problem is even the pneumococcus streptococcus pneumonia cause a significant morbidity so i have seen loads and loads of children with hearing impairment follow streptococcus pneumonia now this is is rare no well, due to the vaccine schedule so since it is since it's very common so now what is after considering all these risk benefit balance now the the guideline management is very easy not complicated very easy. less than 3 months you don't give dexa right because studies are minimal so they are not pretty sure that the the risk is more than the benefit but the more than 3 months you give dexa for him hip gahala the hip gahala and the nothing how severe nothing more than 3 months you give dexa mets that will reduce the hearing impairment by 2/3 nowadays we see palin streptococcus pneumonia so when you give dexa again streptococcus pneumonia induces hearing impairment also like like we can treat matter la meka hambuna la me like it amma unat ekka tibila child's present main problem was amma the gedar idiya they have taken treatment from private sector so davasin dasa nikan amma ahane wa ahen ne tv ke sab de wedi karanne wenna volume ekak I I don't know I whether I put this that one in the Telegram group. So child used to, wanted to have like like lot of fish like increased in the volume. That was in the that uh, again. So when the child came to LRH, there's a profound hearing loss due to sensor. There's a sensory neural hearing deafness. Mukut karan dabe hearing aids useless. So we we did a cochlear implant, but the response was minimal. ඔඩි දෙයි අම්ම මුලින්ම ඕක ඩිටෙක් කළේ වුණා හරියට ආවන්න ෆීඩ් කරා නම් හරි GP කොන්න ඩිටෙක් දැ සෝ කන් ගහෙන නැහැ ළමයා ඉතින් අවුරුද්ද හතකලා මේ සෝ කම්ප්ලීට්ලි ඩෙත් බට් ද ඔග්නිසම් වා ස්ට්‍රිප්ට කරන්න මේ මොන රයිට් සෝ කීප් දැට් ඉන් අ වෙරි ඩේන්ජරස් රයිට් කන් දෙක ගහෙන නැතුව නම් තවද ෆිල් හැපන් ඇහෙන්නේ නැහැ යු කන් ලර්න් නෝ කන් ලර්න් with the cochlear impl- implant also child can like get the things very clearly okay me harita henne right so offering entire life okay so very beautiful uh, girl lassana girl i'm very talented child was perform very well in school right doing multiple things sadly that happened that happened so you can give dexamethasone if the child is more than 3 months right so girl give you that will reduce the inflammation that they, they, they reduce the hearing loss as well as the other uh high def- the other complications like uh, subdural effusions those things also will prevent but the, you, are, you might think whether it will increase the mortality and the purama thyroid ga purama and they led in me sepsis child no right so studies have shown it hasn't increased the mortality as well as the adverse effects so you know resistant septic shock also the final treatment is what finally you are giving steroids right septic shock ka kevlar fluid bolus dena inotropes dena antibiotics dena not responding 
you get steroids right so some people are really, really scared for steroids no don't be like that you need like adi athe den ne pa but in it indicated give it so guys usually you don't give steroids for 4, 14 days then of course they can develop adverse effects you give for only for 4 days right so keep that in your mind so guys usually you need to start with like the with the first dose of antibiotic or even 15 minutes before because why because when you kill the these organisms sometimes they might release more and more cytokines and like can develop these complications so you to prevent those complications always advisable just give with the first dose of antibiotics or even before that don't delay giving dexa 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 got it clear the good right so clear very good so then guys what so other things of course which you have learned symptomatic treatment so child might have fever vomiting by seizures you need to give paracetamol anti non sedative antimetics or maybe anti convulsants depending on the symptoms and you need to monitor the gcs right with the gcs is dropping temperature blood pressure pressure pulse respiratory rate urine output as well as ofc in infants if the child is less than 1 year definitely you need to monitor ofc 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 because they can develop complications right so that is extremely important that is a must so at the same time guys you need to treat the find out for look for the complications and treat accordingly so guys you can you can buy hard so what i used to do when i was a student actually i had a bhutani friend all tashi wala di mage ekal guest ni i think right kal gaya the ne so ekalan gider ballage namat ek so so mom mata ke tiyanni thi i see tashi right that is how i remember it. So I is what race I C T. So they can have race I C T and they can have mission and everything. So race I C T. So cranial nerve palsy or cerebral palsy. Cranial nerve palsy and nothing else. These what? they can have things and again if you and you can be in the brain third part of the third parts of the brain a is guys what uh, abscess formation so that is very important have cranial nerve palsy ke tarwa dagan abscess formation tarwa dagan so sometimes when you are treating the child some children might not respond the one re- reason is guys what the abscess formation so sometimes they can have seizures of course can be due to so many things they can have hydrocephalus because of obstruction to the pathway or maybe increased production or a disabsorption of the cs yes then they can have e is a empyema or effusion or effusion or empyema of the subdural space subdural region ekey vatura ekatu wenawa hari pleural effusion ekey wage subdural space ekey vatura ekatu wenawa eka infect unnath empyema of the subdural space and the i is guys what the i is a uh, infarction of the artery right so arteritis ayi le infarct enna pula ekin artery is inflamed vela that is possible right infarction due to arteritis so those are the complications i want you all to have put stars for this cranial nerve palsy and the abscess formation uh, which can ask in your questions so in general Yes, bacterial meningitis. What is the what are the what are the causes? Can you commonly be cranial nerve palsy? Anyone? Yes, Sanjana. Meningitis. Uh, so cranial nerve three and six. Five. Three and six. Yeah. So most important ones are the eight, eight, eight. After that, my brother got me right because they can have inflammation, coffee inflammation, and here in the right. Uh, then. Uh, janani any amandi amandi janani tell me another cranial nerve tak it what 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 tell something what amandi i can't hear what quickly 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 
Uh, six now, policy. Yeah, but so most of the girls usually say that that is seven, right? But right, so the eight now is the most important and one of the commonest, and as well as the six now, policy guys, because why they when they have raised eye CT, so the, the six now has the longest and the thinnest part inside the brain, so it can easily can get damaged, so they can have six now, policy, right? Good. Clear? Good. So those are the local complications the children can have following meningitis. Sometimes they can have systemic complications. So systemic complications, guys, what guys, they can have step septicemia, they can have uh, DIC, they can have sometimes uh, adre bilateral adrenal hemorrhages and uh, addition sometimes rarely, right? And also one of the important complications is guys, what they can have SIADH. So what is SIADH? Syndrome of inappropriate ABX secretion. So when they have some sort of brain damage or damage to lungs, they can have excessive production of ADHD, ADH. So what happens is they will have, when there is a high, high levels of ADH secretion, they will have, the water will get reabsorbed from the kidneys and they will have fluid retention, right? Water will get reabsorbed. So what happens is that you will classically notice reduced urine output, but when the water will get reabsorbed without sodium, they can have dilutional hyponatremia. To mutra perineka reabsorb in my ADH. Not the elder strong, right? ADH mitra vadivin. So what happens is only the water will get reabsorbed. So they will have dilutional hyponatremia. Because of that, they will become drowsy. Sometimes they can have a convulsion. Sodium adrenal. But classically, you will notice the reduced urine output, but they are u volumic BP adutne, BP baditne, so u volumic, but right? So, so you need to think about SIADH, that is important complication, right? So those are the important complications which you need to know. So these local complications commonly caused by hemophilus influenza. The systemic complications or the mortality, right? The chokers follow meningo. So then you need to treat for the primary focus, guys. So if there's a lung abscess, you may need to drain it. Empyema, you may need to put an IC tube, right? You need to treat the underlying cause. Then you need to prevent, do, take the measures to prevent the complicate, prevent the spread. So especially if it is a meningo focus suspecting, you need to isolate the child. And also sometimes you may need to Keep in an uninfectious area of like once you like once the child is get settled, what is the reason? It's these are very practically important. Treat the baba to settle in our ideal pneumonia car just in case if a child develop and fever or something, you will not know what is there, like whether the child is developing abscess or something, or whether there is a poor response to treatment, or whether there is right the cross infection. So make sure right child is like not getting any infection after that. That is important, right? So make sure you look after that. So then, of course, as HO, you need to notify H44, 544, right? So when I then you may need to consider about giving prophylaxis. So prophylaxis is not given routinely, but given for only if these organisms are positive. What are those organisms? Meningococcus or HIV. So if the culture of PCR report shows as positive for meningococcus or HIV, you need to treat with prophylaxis for positive contacts, right? So meningococcus the positive not here positive patient can in not mulu here get their tama they known get their cart theta here get it. DKI Kakna is get their cart theta, DKI get the Canadian positive, DKI get a din, right? So all the positive contact. So if uh, someone get positive for him, if any child is there who is partially immunized, for, who is for less than four years of partially immunized, you need to treat the entire household contact. How do you know how do vaccines complete the You need to for the all positive contact. Good. Have a rough idea. So what is the uh, prophylactic drug, drug of choice? What is the drug you are going to prescribe? Rifampicin, rifampicin, rifampicin. 
right? Good. So do you really follow up? Follow up means sometimes nowadays, of course, you do those things. With some measures, of course, you do it when the child is in the ward. Some thing, some other things you assist after discharge. So one important thing is you always see during the ward stay, you need to assist. But each and every clinic visit also you need to assist. Then, guys, you need to do the development assessment, neurological assessment, right? And uh, right, those are important. Hearing assessment nowadays, we recommend you need to do it urgent, early, early uh, hearing assessment before discharge, right? So that is important because to prevent and to take necessary actions uh, for hearing impairment. So, Nigeria meningitis. Actually, even like we might ask questions related to this, but again, like uh, you don't need to, this is not a microbiology paper, right? This is pediatric. Capsulated, glycerin, right? Capsulated, but you don't need to do whether it is like uh, fastidious or no, you, like you don't need to know. This is not a micro, microbiology. You need to know the clinical significance of this. So what is this, guys? Nyseria meningitis. Where does it like the stack? So guys, here the one of the important thing is it is there even in no, some normal people also in the nasopharyngeal region, right? Sometimes they might not like they might not be symptomatic. But they might spread. That's why Ekapar me Lanka we na hai, menne hira kedra hai villa. Hira to suddhe patta aaj. You mean they? It's not really necessary, right? So to dekari, if we can check, mind no one, right? So it it might be there in the nas like nasopharyngeal region. So like it can spread airborne as well as especially if it is. Positive contact is there, the risk will be high. So, can spread through saliva. Now, we will the passindu. So, you are in abroad now. So, take precaution. How can it, how can it get spread? So, you also make sure you don't share the toothbrush. Foreigners, Africans, so, right? Don't share your tool. If someone get collapsed in the beach, if someone get drowned, like, careful when you are giving CPR. If you fall in love with the African lady, right? Careful when don't kiss anyone, right? Right? Uh, no, no, I don't know. Right? So, uh, so anyway, like there's a risk. Okay, good. So sometimes people can be asymptomatic and can spread, right? So that is important. So here the important thing is, guys, what? So some people are vulnerable. So if they develop, get, get high load of infection, as if they have low immunity, they can have this meningococcal sepsis followed by meningitis. So Sometimes it can be just the meningitis without sepsis. But the sepsis is more common compared to meningitis and more dangerous. So one of the important thing is, guys, what, when they have meningococcal sepsis, they will, majority will develop a rash, 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 rash. So you will see the rash, that is the classic rash is, guys, what? The men, these, that is purpuric, 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 purpuric rash will be there, right? So purpuric, it will be generalized, right? Because like there are so many other conditions are there which you might see purpuric rash. But tell me one common important condition where we, you will see purpurine children. Anyone? Very good, Anjana. That is HSV, HSV, HSV. Cannot show online purpura, right? So that is very common. I can remember when I was doing intern, she take like COVID. Like distribution was very classic. Oh, everyone took uh, return to Sinai. Because I was so sure that it was just a viral figure. Uh, I had an 
is HSC and has a developer viral fee on top of them, right? So if you know the classic distribution, then you don't need to get scared. So they will classically have Curfury crash over the dependent parts, lower limbs and the upper limbs, extensor surfaces, and the buttocks can get involved, but the trunk tree will be spared and the face is also usually spared. And they will have arthritis as well as they will have this kidney involvement, maybe plus or minus abdominal involvement. That is a classic picture. So if you know those things, then you don't need to worry. But this the per here it will be generalized and clinically they are very ill. And the important thing is, guys, but so these are perforized, like it's uh, between two millimeters to one centimeter in size, very regular, and you will see a necrotic patch most of the time in the center, right? And the other thing, so it is like erythematous and perfish. Irregular margins are well demarcated. So the, here, the one one of the important thing is, guys, but this this sign is important because there are some conditions are there. We are like uh, I can remember most of the like uh, doctors actually they are calling me. They are like without identifying the rash properly, right? So the thing is, I can remember sometimes the very ill, very high CRP, high WBC, high ESR, very toxic ill looking children coming with a rash. But those are like macular papula sometimes. Sometimes it is measles. Sometimes it is Kawasaki, right? So they are misinterpreting, right? So make sure like uh, you identify the this condition, this rash very clearly. So here the important thing is, guys, in this uh, note also, I have uh, put a picture I'll share with you. So can you see the middle picture, right? So can you see this picture? So they have kept a glass. But the balan. This is called whether the rash is blanching or non-blanching. So this, most of these macular papillary rashes, when you press it, it will disappear. That is blanching. But this purpura, classically, those are non-blanching. So bleeding into skin conditions of petechia purpura, those are non-blanching. So when you press it, this will, it will not get disappear. So when you press it with a glass, you can see the these uh, rash will be there. Right? So that is an important sign you need to know. Got it? Good. So here the important thing is, guys, right? So there are there are prophylactic medications are there for the context. Penicillin is for, for the drug of choice for the treat as the treatment purpose, as well as uh, yes, the vaccine also they are right. It's not in the EPI schedule for, for the risk categories. And uh, when there's endemic is going on, sometimes we consider about vaccine, right? So if you know those things, that would be enough for your MCQs and SPAs. So here the important thing is now you learned about encephalitis, just quickly brush, it, like quickly going through. So it's about the inflammation of the brain parenchyma, usually caused by viral, viral, viral. Sometimes real bacteria are also possible. Out of viruses, the commonest, commonest, commonest is what HSV, HSV type 1, type 1, type 1. But sometimes JE, varicella, EBV, CMB, mumps, rabies, rubella, measles, again, yes, possible, right? Rube measles can cause acute encephalitis as well as there's a long term significant problem is there, that is SSPE. So I have put the telegram, uh, this video, in the in this video in the telegram. What is it? It is meningococcal sepsis. MA, right? It is results, right? Okay, so the long term complications are like Aptamai, SSPE, right? Okay, got it. So that is very cla classic these days. Huge epidemic is there, measles, Pogal, Rakhina. So for the Muslim students, I'm so when you like, you need to tell the community, right? You need to encourage the vaccination. So everyone, has, like, Sadly, like uh, they haven't vaccinated. So the bigger children, like two years from, uh, or like one year, two year children, majority were everyone. Everyone were sadly extreme Muslim things are there. But so the, because like somehow false belief, so you need to tell them the reality. So because they can have SSP and they can suffer, suffer, suffer and die these children, right? I have seen 
SSP children, right? Mole, Mary, 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 Gila, Ate, Masu, Ahala, right? Mela, Tan, Mary, right? Very sad story. So that's a you need to advise. So the other children also nowadays, like when they develop an upper respiratory tract infection or something, they, they, in MOH people, they delay the vaccine. So 10 months, 11 months in a can delay, then they are developing measles. So make sure like the small, simple things don't delay that long. So try to give, especially during this epidemic, right? If you have given an one dose of MMR, that will prevent like 80% of the coverage, like it will prevent 80%. Right, they come again. What you will be almost safe, right? Most of you all have given taken one dose, right? Till you have a risk. That's not then, Tina, right? And also the adult epidemic would be right. You can get be careful. So, right, so presentation as we mentioned, brace ICP, but virus induced classic features are there. HSP classically, they will have alteration of the behavior and the cognitive impairment. But the Japanese encephalitis, more commonly, they will attack to the basal ganglia rather than the inferior frontal. So because of that, you might see extrapyramidal signs. Nowadays, it's less common following vaccination. So extrapyramidal signs are they can have dystonic reaction, poor reappetite, or maybe Parkinsonism features can be there, right? Paricella, again, it will mainly attack to the cerebellum, right? So they can have cerebellitis, again, important. Because varicella is not, it's common in the community and uh, it's not there in the routine EPI schedule, either chicken fox, or So you will see significant children with cerebellitis, encephalitis on top of that cerebellitis. So encephalitis, you know, are features, they will commonly have ataxia, balance. So that is very prominent. Okay. So you will see that we'll ask in your questions as well. Good. So the diagnosis, you need to do this MCEG, you will see changes or MRI, you will see changes in the frontal, inferior frontal and temporal commonly. The CSF, if you arrange lumbar puncture later on, you will see the macroscopically high pressure as well as full report, you will see red blood cells with a viral picture and PCR will help to identify the, the exact virus. So the treat, key treatment is guys, but IVA cyclovir, usually 14 days, some do even 21 days, right? Okay, so TB meningitis, have a rough idea, TB meningitis only ask in your SBAs, right? We don't ask in your MCQs, right? You need to have a rough idea, right? Because it's not very common as meningitis or encephalitis, but it is not uncommon. And it has a significant clinical pattern, right? So what would be the classic clinical pattern? TB meningitis asking for the No. So usually pulmonary, then disseminate and go into the brain. It's like a respiratory root. You take it in the lung infection, disseminate and so here the important thing is guys, some children will have a classic chronic cough prior to this onset of these symptoms. The past history of chronic cough, past history of positive contact. Gather in a chicken, a kaino, a kaino, a kaino, follow the TB positive or TB checker. Lane, Tia can a king, all the together uncle to positive TB positive. Hey, Thomas Amarilla, Baba Taragana, no, Gil, Vayama, Dakino. So there are uh, so many cases, so they are right. So again, it is important. So there is a positive contact history as well as the child had a chronic cough in the past. So here the important message is guys, what this TB is causing a significant inflammation, but it is not be so acute. So because of that, they, their symptoms and signs will be subacute. Because they will have fear for two weeks, or again, more than one week usually. Meningitis, you can't wait that long. They will develop other symptoms very quickly, like day three, day four, the fit take off, or something like that. But these children, like they will have fever and headache for like one week, then develop in the other complications and symptoms. So they will be subacute onset. So that is very classic in TB meningitis. You need to have, like, when they have subacute onset, you need to have a high degree of suspicious, right? 
So when you do investigations, those are very vague, but the ESR will be very high initial basic investigation. And when you do a lumbar puncture, the proteins will be extremely high. The lymphocytes will be prominent, but the proteins will be very high. And the other important thing is, guys, but sometimes you might see features of complications. So what are the complications they can develop? So here the important message is, guys, what I told you, they will be, they will cause significant inflammation slowly. And these materials are very thick. It will be very turbid and centrochromic, right? Very thick. So usually TB will affect the brace base of the brain. Usually it will be very thick. And if you like do and like uh, postmodern, you will see very cheesy like material. Cheese, 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 talia forget, you know, in the base of the brain, right? So this is the brain, this is the midbrain and everything, right? So at the base of the brain, you will see like a very thick materials like cheese. So what happens? So sometimes guys, but so some cranial nerves are going just below the base of the brain, as well as sometimes this it might block the this ESF pathway, right? Then we love ESF pathway, block around in the area. So what can they have? They can have cranial nerve palsies as well as they can have they can have hydrocephalus. So the cranial nerve palsies are very important. So the cranial nerve palsies, bacterial meningitis, but but did we discuss commonly eight nerve palsy and the six nerve palsy. So here also when they develop hydrocephalus or when there's an inflammation is going on, of course they can have cranial, they can have race ICP and they can have six nerve palsies. But the eight nerve palsy is not so common in TB meningitis. But there is one important, another important cranial nerve is there. Uh, you might see that is very common. What is the next? Most important cranial nerve pulse, which means six nerve is complete, of course. Do not worry on your current. Looking at by looking at the anatomy, can you tell? Just anatomy. Is Come on, guys. I may be in a mole. May be in a continuous in the mid brain, mid brain, pons and middle arm, lumbar, right? Mid brain. So you call it as brains. It is spinal cord. I make an atomic finish that it is. Now, ten ten. Ah, pattern. Excellent. Why don't you unmute ten? Say, huh? The olfactory nerve. The olfactory nerve. Olfactory nerve. Optic nerve is optic nerve also goes in the bottom. Is the piece of the brain. The olfactory also possible, but olfactory is not going to keep But the optic, optic, optic nerve, you know, this optic nerve goes just below the brain. It's not there in the brain stem. And it's cranial, other cranial nerves are there in the brain stem. But it is just above the brain stem in the base of the brain. So the optic nerve, optic nerve, you know, right? That is optic nerve, right? Optic chiasma is there. So the optic nerve, so they can go into sometimes a blindness, visual impairment, and maybe blindness, visual impairment, and maybe even blindness. Got it? Good. Are you clear? So easy to easy, right? So nothing. So pediatrics is easy. So we'll move to the questions. And pata pata gala ki the So here the important message is, guys, what? So take the questions, take the questions. Can you take the questions and give a small message? So the, if there are like juniors are there, right? So one of the important thing is guys, what? So they learn the theory, prop, learn the theory properly, right? So always, 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 I'm advising you all to cover the theory, theory, theory course. There are several reasons are there. So then you will be able to perform well in your uh, these university exams as well as the ERPM exams theory as well as the long cases, right? So you will be very confident. What I have seen is the people who have covered theory, they are very confident when they are uh, starting by them. 
So theory is the most, most important thing. If you have covered and if you learn the things in a very rational way, you will not find any problem. You will have, can have, a, like your entire career will be, you can have very happy life. What is the importance of the thing is, and the internship also, whether you like it or not, majority have to do with pediatrics for your internship, right? So, regular for graduation, local and good affiliated medicine selected incidents are ready. If you want to stay around Colombo and like, can do, you need to do peds. And uh, the peds, there's no advantage of doing medicine. So, peds can make advantages, good or ready, right? You can stay around Colombo, you can have a comfortable life and like uh, enjoy most of your are girls, right? So PhD is a very suitable thing, right? So then I can tell you hundreds of things, right? So again, intern and most of the time the RH also you will be working the same in the same unit. So you will have a lot of experience in PhD. Indirectly, you will motivate and you will uh, push to do PhD in PhD. But if you want to do in such way, so you need to have very good base. So they learn the theory, learn the theory, learn the theory. That would be the best option. But uh, if you are a junior or if you are not sitting for this time exams, so yes. If you think if you now you are exams like those, if you are sitting for this time November exams, so you have like one and a half months, right? Theory of So then, of course, first of all, you need to pass. Later on, you can, before your internship, if you want, you can cover theory. So here, the important thing is, guys, what? If you are sitting for this time exams, make sure, like, how Utsavantya Jagan, how Jagan Utsavantya, that's it. Right, Lamyad, Vadipur Mahansivan Lamyad, Jagan. Whether it's the bright person or the most brainy person or the person who is working hard for you cannot. No, oh, the smartest person. Right? So the exams, you need to be smart rather than just studying everything. So here the thing is, guys, what? So that's the one reason like uh, we are making you all smart. So for those who are sitting for this time exams, like with the limited time, cover the SBA tricks program first. Then you, if you have time, NCQ-based topic five revision. So if you join to this, you can have the access to access for the paper classes as well. well. So SBA tricks is a must, must, must. You must have heard from your seniors. Everyone is joining. You will be safe, right? So the reason is guys, what one is we will carry five marks. This in CQ is minus plus really you are getting very small amount. Plus SBS, you are getting five, 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 five. So make sure like thing is uh, if you want to cover that, you will be able to score more than 23 out of 25 if you are a bright student. Even if you're not, you will be able to score more than 21 out of 25. But we have practically seen is most of the students get paid in the exams in whatever the subject. Because they are scoring very low marks in SPA. They are scoring 12 out of 25. Teachers are not real. Real. They are not real. They are real. They are not The reality is you are scoring 12 out of 25. Teacher paper is not real. They are not real. They are not real. If you have scored 23 marks, even if you score 0 in MCQs, you pass. MCQ paper is not a pass. You have scored more than 45. So, here the reality is you are scoring 12 out of 25. You will not be able to pass the exam. So, if you score around this much, so basically you are scoring 10 or more SBAs compared to others. One SBA will carry 10 marks, one SBA will carry 5 marks. So, altogether you are scoring more 50 or more compared to others. So, that's why none of my students get failed in the exams and uh, they are getting better ranks. So, the best thing is always theory, right? My theory pass rate is always, like for the last eight years, it was 100% always. Theory join is a cow root, then you can fail. But if you join only the SBA, it's still pass rate is around 92 to 95 in all the years. So you will be able to pass, right? If you cover 
entire SBFX program and if you get smart, if you study a little bit and so on. And also, you can brush up the entire syllabus with the MCQ-based topic file solution. We are, I'm quickly recalling the entire syllabus as well as quickly doing these uh, MCQs on the each topic as well as subtopics. So you will get perfect. Exam pass in a just studying on a will not be. Why did I do this lecture? One reason is to show the, the, this, the guidelines as change, you need to learn these things. Other thing is, guys, but so this is one of the commonest and the commonest topic and which we frequently ask in your exams and one of the easiest. Make it good Right? Then when it comes to these uh, endocrine conditions, pubertal problems, growth hormone deficiencies, right? Right? So here the important thing is that I learn the theory, that would be the best option. But with the limited time, if you are sitting for this time no exam, how this matrix program, you will be safe. Passe and Right? You will be sorry after some time. Okay. So I can remember the best example is there's a nice, very bright two students are there one and they share for the university there for the batch tops, right? So then of course uh, they got kids is not easy, right? They, they got they were the batch tops, but they unfortunately got doing all subjects, but they got failed in uh main two like they got failed, those two got failed in peaks. Then they were so depressed. They thought like they can take a like top the this island rank. Then peaks fail here. So they were very upset. But they were all their colleagues who were very like had a list performance in the university time. They have all got through in peaks. So then the exam is given. I go to Halabala. The queue. When it comes to the exam, I go to the local queue. Then I have to go to the SBA trick. So I have to go to the exam. Then I have to go to the exam. So 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 I have to go to the exam. Right? So then after those two students, actually, like their parents also, I knew their parents. Right? They later on only they got got to know that I am doing classes. So then they joined. So then they performed extremely well. They got through, and the wife also had very good ranks and everything. Right? They, they, they are doctors. So here the important thing is, guys, what? Asse dukkila hari ani aparade agran ke ka bright ke label ke aatne ko upkom tikan aati. Ogol first attempt upkom pass huna balance karla. So you will be labeled as bright, right? As well as the you have not been to the right again, no, or to the right again, no, right, you will not have the opinion, and so you will be motivated as a bright student. So somehow, I want you all to balance all the subjects, balance everything, and somehow get through all these subjects in one shot, be smart, rather than just study, right? So keep that in your mind. So once you cover this matrix, you will learn the pattern and the art, so you will be able to score high marks in other subjects as well. Once you learn that, right? So keep that in your mind. It's not this Beatrix. I am the one who started and uh, okay, right? Eight years back, and I was. I'm still continuing. This Beatrix, but anyway, you can't compare. Meva Geek program, no one can create it. I don't think, right? So you will like, uh, I'm doing so many patients. It's not about the number of patients, it's all about the analysis and everything. And how you try getting the correct analysis because when you get a new question, you need should be able to get the correct answer. Because what we have practically seen is you all are doing papers, 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 papers. You all are thinking that this is a Chishat exam, scholarship exam. So when you do this, is not scholarship, this is medicine. Okay. So what you do is you most of the all, you all are spy hard in these answers. Questions they ask once you have the Dakitra Dino, Ogula Padankar, Katapadankar, you know, every one of the way you have practiced. So you are thinking you can apply that for your ERP. No, it will never. So we change the answers, but the concepts are same. Change the question a little bit, 
we change the question a little bit, then the answer gets completely changed. So then you mark something else. That's the reason you get paid. So learn the things in a rational way, then you can have a, a right, a very high mark as well as a comfortable life. So I can remember when I was an intern, on board round Karadi, there were three SR registrars, three senior registrars, and uh, these uh, emergency registrars, nutrition registrar, radiology SR, everyone was there. On board round Karadi, I was like, move on and get in the lock. Right, Genyan. What is the reason? I, the consultant was the most senior consultant at Tellari, so he used to ask questions. Ahana, ahana, ahana. It's all like, come, be empty part to cure. Done, 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 Registrar card done. So finally, the for everything, it shows giving the answer. Right? The reason is he is asking the common practical thing. He wants to know questions are done. Why is it not consultant? Let me put the argument for the answer. Can you not tell? Professors, right? Bad people are good and the private. That's good. But they, those who are common practical. They will leave questions are ten. Right? So those who are not exams can handle our work. You know these things, practical things. So it's not about the hospital working in the hospital, right? It's about the get taking the concepts correct. Okay, right. So if you have taken these concepts correctly, you will be able to. So high marks. So we will start with the SBS in this paper. So please take the questions right. So question number one, easy. Now concentrate, right? So ten-year-old boy presented with high-grade fever, headache, and photophobia. On the examination, positive and negative were present. GCS was 15. Pass rate was 108. Blood pressure normal. The saturation was 99. What is the best management would be? Urgent blood culture, lumbar puncture, IV capotaxin, blood culture, IV capotaxin, lumbar puncture, lumbar puncture, blood culture. So send me answers. IV capotaxin, empirical antibiotics therapy on admission, urgent CT brain. Yes, send, 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 send. Very easy. Then let me what you learn. Excellent, Patum. Excellent, uh, Kanangaram Nimesha. Send, 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 send. Very good, Amandi. So, guys, go according to the management orders. So, ABC, so whether the ABC is stable, yes. Then, right? So, then you will take the blood for the investigations. No contraindications. So, even the absence of contraindications, you go for a lumbar puncture and you then you go for the IV capotaxin. So the answer would be AAA. So the blood culture, lumbar puncture, and capotaxin according to new guidelines. Calling Tibba Vidyata, the answer would be B. Got it? Good. So then you know, sometimes like things after like few years, five years, there will be a significant change. So when I'm discussing papers, there are like updates are there, but in papers, of course, I, am, I will teach out, right? Few updates, but who they are, but nephrotic, uh, like there are things are there. UTI, this as well, right? Okay, 10 year old boy is brought into the emergency department by ambulance with an acute history of reduced consciousness. His mother described him complaining of headache and fever earlier in the day. On examination, he is pyrexial, GCS was 14. And the blood pressure was 80 by 45. Few petit can purpura were noticed in, on his leg. What is the single most effective immediate management for this child? Very easy. Send me answers. TT brain, normal saline bolus, dextrose bolus, intubate the child, the take blood for culture and start antibiotics. Excellent, guys. Excellent, excellent. So what is it? 10-year-old child, the minimum blood pressure should be 90 by 60. Now the child is having 80 by 45, so ABC is unstable. So you need to give circulation, the impairment is there. So you need to give 10, 20 ml per kg, rapid bolus, rapid bolus, rapid bolus. Good. Question number three. I told you pediatric is easy. How do you do it? Right, recently one student told me, 
So pediatric is easy to learn. Like if pediatric may be easy to learn, it is very difficult. But you are the ones who are making it. Right? It is easy. The people have made this complicated, right? Okay. So three-year-old child presented with fever for four days, convulsion on day four. Last three days, the child had high-grade fever, and child uh, was ill in between fever. Was right uh, on admission. Child had tonic. Chronic convulsions on left side of the body, which has been continued for three thirty minutes prior to admission. Seizure has been controlled after two doses of midazolam. Airway breathing circulation is stable. Capillary blood sugar is hundred. So, what is the most appropriate next step in the management? So, urgent lumbar puncture, send blood investigation, and decide treatment depending on the results. Treat as complex febrile convulsion, urgent CT brain. Immediately give IV antibiotics after obtaining blood culture. Send me answers. Excellent pattern. Send, 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 send. DNA mm gay? -hmm. Uh, not exactly. Yes, send. Guys, it's not even there. Not a evala tina, the tundinic, see evala tina, the tundinic. Yekinic cannot evil, then a key evil than Tino. Very good, Damandi. So here the important thing. So you have thought a any of the center, A, C, E, have we have thought. This is good at the neck. See again, good at the neck. So, Makada, you need to treat this as complex. Febrile, obvious no complex, febrile convulsion. Majority have sent their C, right? So three year old child, they can have meningitis or febrile convulsion. ID is possible. Fear for four days. So usually febrile convulsions occur on day one. Day one. Theater Asuwa Kanuwa Anuwa Kma day one. Theater the higher quitter day two. Theater. Attack now, me akhi. Oh, to look in day three, see it take a quality. Day four never, right? So, Rayan is so almost always your case. Then day one, right? Rayali day two, not the after that, right? So then you need to think something else. Then March last and last three child was high grade fever, ill in between fever. He can make that. So the febrile convulsions usually cause just a viral fever. So usually majority will be well in between fever. But when they have meningitis, they will be ill in between fever, right? So on a, a admission, child had tonic tonic convulsion on the left side. So there's a focal convulsion, mm -hmm. right? And continue to 30 minutes prior to admission. So there's a prolonged convulsion that has been there. We need to be at the Latino. Seizure has been controlled after two doses of medicine, more lamented than doses they could be. So ABC is stable, but uh, CBS is 100. So what were the absolute and relative contraindications? So absolute was raise ICP. Things are there. GCS was OK. They haven't mentioned anything. Papilloidema or coagulopathy mentioned. But the child had uh, the seizure was there. Like prolonged seizure has been there, and which was focal seizure. Right and required two doses of midazolam, and child was very ill. So, so it's always always better to right give IV antibiotic after obtaining blood clot. Right, because like if you are into just in case if there's an intracranial pathology is going on, sometimes you might not be able to differentiate whether it is like race ICP exactly is there, right? So sometimes it can be encephalitis even, right? So it's always better to go for and give antibiotics after obtaining culture, then you can arrange the lumbar puncture. As I mentioned, you need to be practical rather than just theory. Okay. Good. So the answer is E E E. Question number four. 
So four-year-old child presented with fever, headache, and convulsion. The child was treated with IV capitaxin for four days. Child was persistently drowsy and continued to have high fever, have fever despite of treatment. Child developed another focal convulsion on day four. On examination, there were hemorrhagic pustules over the lips. Wrist reflexes were noticed bilaterally. And what is the most appropriate next step in the management? Easy. Yeah, excellent, guys. Excellent. So this is nothing else. This is encephalitis, right? So child had raised significant raised ICP features as well as hemorrhagic pustules over the face. This is about HSV encephalitis. So you need to give IV acyclovir. Acyclovir, acyclovir is the answer. Nine uh, month old child presented with five days history of fever, vomiting, and irritability. Child had been on oral antibiotics for the last one week. The CSF report, the proteins are 80, sugar levels are less than 50%, the neutrophils are 10, and the lymphocytes were 25. Blood culture was sterile, and the mobility is the most appropriate investigation to confirm the diagnosis. So send me answers. Bacterial culture, bacterial antigen, acid fast bacilli, viral culture, and electron microscopy. Excellent, guys, excellent. Now I think I hope you all have understood well. So this is nothing else. This is about partially treated bacterial meningitis. Well, child has been treated with oral antibiotics for the last one week, but still the proteins and sugar differences are there, but lymphocytic picture is there. So this is the classic picture of partial treated meningitis. So to confirm that the best investigation would be PCR for CSA, PCR for bacterial antigen. Easy. Quickly, the meningitis. So easy, right? Good. So anyone had five out of five? So I'm going to finish this in five minutes' time. Regarding meningitis, meningococcus is the commonest or causative organism in Sri Lanka? No, that is streptococcus pneumonia. Next difference is classically seen in infants with meningitis? No. Meningeal irritation features are less. The frontal bulging will be maybe the only positive thing. It's a clinical diagnosis? No, it's a CSF analysis. IV capotaxin given as a first line therapy? Yes, right? Keptriaxone, IV keptriaxone, yes, right? That's a first line treatment. Fluid restriction is indicated in acute state? No, unless you are thinking about SIADH, right? So you don't give, you don't restrict the fluid, you give the maintenance, but uh, you don't restrict it. Regarding CSF microscopy, easy, easy, right? Diplococci, Positive, gram positive diplococci, streptococcus pneumonia. Yes, true. Straight from the note. Negative diplococci, meningococcus. True. Gram positive range, grape like clusters. Yeah, that's epidemic. Gram positive bacilli. Mm -hmm. Gram positive. Right? Bacilli. Then. No, that is wrong. That is false, right? So, uh, this uh, hemophilus influenza is it. Gram negative copper bacilli, right? Gram negative copper E. E. coli? No, that is gram negative bacilli. So the lumbar puncture procedure and results of CSF analysis. Lumbar puncture should be arranged before starting antibiotic. True. Right? That is true. Okay. Lymphocytic count is predominant in complex febrile convulsions? No. False. It is normal. RV sample should be collected just after the lumbar puncture? No, you need to take it before the lumbar puncture because once you have lumbar puncture again, lumbar puncture again, lumbar puncture again. So it will double the stress, right? So stress hormones will get elevated and complete these reports will be, get completely altered, right? So you can't interpret it. So make sure you take the random blood sugar before arranging the lumbar puncture, right? So when you are clicking, doing the kind of like, you take the RBS also with the blood investigations. CS the sugar levels are always normal in viral meningitis. No, the this mounts is a different like exception. CSF for bacterial antigen is useful if child 
has been treated with antibiotics prior to LP. Yes, exactly. Good. Regarding steroid therapy in meningitis, reduce incidence of hearing loss. True. Increased risk of mortality. No, will not. Given prior to antibiotics. True. Indicated after neonatal period. False. Indicated after three months. Neonates is less than 28 days or one month. Continue medication for 10 to 14 days. False. Continue for four days. Causes of neck stiffness. Delepatitinous structures. Imagine Karanda. So when there's a lymph node, yes. When there's a muscle spasm, yes. When there's a cervical vertebral problem, yes. When there's a cerebellar problem, yes. When there's an posterior pharyngeal problems, like retropharyngeal abscess, yes, very easy. So meningoid capillite is obviously true. Medulloblastoma, yes, medulloblastoma is a cerebellar tumor. It's true. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. Yes, it will irritate the meninges. Yes. IMN infections, it will cause significant, commonly posterior cervical lymph nodes as well as enlarged tonsils. Retropharyngeal lapses. ECTC. Ah. Right? So this is nothing, right? So as I mentioned, learn the things in a very rational way. Everything would be easy. This is just one topic. But like everything will be easy. So guys, so if you have any questions, you can stay and ask. So learn the things in a proper way. So we are going to start papers very soon. But before that, cover the SBHX program as well as plus or minus MCQ based topic wise revision early as possible. Then you will feel papers are nothing. Okay, good. So then guys, have a nice day. If you want to have a clear idea, you can call me or WhatsApp me or you can contact my main coordinator that is Shana. So then guys, have a nice day. See you. So can I ask one question uh, yeah. regarding a doubt that I... Can you ask? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so this is about uh, TB actually. Like uh, uh, I was wondering like if you have a child who has been exposed and if the child is around more than five years old, who is having constant exposure, will you give isonizing prophylaxis uh, even if the man flu is not positive? No, no, no. Yeah, the, here the important thing is there is something called contact screening. Right, yeah. So you do the contact screening. And if it is suggestive, you give INH prophylaxis, otherwise not. All right. So even if, like, for example, household contact is uh, positive? For household contact you don't do. You take the sputum samples, uh -huh. you take the x-ray, and you do the man too. And if there's a clinically symptomatic, you give the full course. But if All those right. investigations are positive and clinically asymptomatic, you give INH prophylaxis. Oh, you do give INH pro prophylaxis? Yes. If the All right. investigations are positive, but clinically asymptomatic. Right? Ah, oh, okay. Pediatrics, it, you need to have a high degree of suspicious because like, not like adults, because the symptoms are very vague. The sputum samples will not be positive all the time. The X-ray changes yeah. will not be so. Positive. So that's why you need to take. You need to have an overall picture. Ah uh, yes, sir. And also one more question, sir, regarding um, that is posterior retrovab. I asked you a question like a long time ago, but uh, I that was a mixed question, sir, regarding that was a UTI on top of uh, posterior retrovab and obstruction. If there is obstruction with the posterior retrovab, valve, um, now can you just straight away catheterize if it's palpable or should you confirm it with ultrasound before you catheterize? Uh, it's like this, uh, uh, like uh, when you, in like it's like this. So sometimes you might detect these things in antenatally, right? So yeah. you notice antenatally, what you can do is like, uh, you can straight away catheterize. Uh -huh. now, okay. If you haven't noticed antenatally, but if the child didn't pass urine for 24 hours, you need to palpate the bladder. Right? Yes. So if the bladder is there, so a child can have symptoms, which if the child is irritable, so then catheterize. Oh, okay. But if it's a clinical judgment, but if the child is not so symptomatic, bladder is not that large, then confirm it an ultrasound scan, 
then happy prime. So it depends, as I mentioned. Like it's okay, okay, so thank like, you, sir. But you need to do practically. A patient can yeah. it can be due to so many things. The commonest cause is the yeah. hydration. And the difficulty palpate in small kids sometimes bladder. Right? Yes, so if okay. the bladder is so obvious and enlarged, because if and child is irritable, I don't know, I don't know, so you know the child is in pain. So then insert it. Yeah. All right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. That's all. Thank you so much, sir. Lecture also, sir. Okay. Any other any other questions, guys? Uh, so good. Good afternoon, sir. I have a question regarding yeah. SPA one. Can I go ahead? Yeah. Uh, so Please in SPA one. Uh, so in SBA one, there are features of raised ICP that is headache and photophobia. Uh, but how are we allowed to do lumbar puncture test? Headache and photophobia is not uh, a raised ICP features. It's a meningeal irritation feature. Headache can oh, be there, right. but right? Photophobia is a meningeal irritation feature. Oh, all right, all right. Thank you. I got it. Any other questions, guys? No questions. Right. Okay, guys. Then have a nice day. So, uh, Thank you, sir. Soon. Okay. Bye. Have a nice day.